What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn as Krillin, the strongest Z fighter. Finale. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. Beerus yawned as he kept his hand on Wiss's shoulder and waited for them to arrive at Earth. He struck a conversation to pass the time. Wiss, do you think that guy who I dreamed about is a super scion god? Wiss mused to himself and responded. That person is Son Goku's son and his power and potential are very high. But he didn't touch the realm of gods. His father and Vegeta are approaching the realm of gods. But without a good teacher... It will take them a long while to reach it by themselves. Beerus nodded at Wiss's explanation as they traveled in the void. After a while, they approached Earth and entered its atmosphere immediately appearing at Bulma's birthday party. Wiss looked around and spotted tons of food which he tried and also didn't try before, so he got to work. Beerus followed him. Bulma didn't comment on their arrival. Wiss already informed her of this beforehand but she didn't know Beerus came to the party with other intentions. Beerus clashed with Majin Buu on the topic of pudding, and he was ready to obliterate the Majin even though he grew stronger than the last time he fought he wasn't on the level of Beerus yet. Even though he cared about training and power, he thought he was strong enough after training for like a few minutes. Majin Buu's potential was very high, but his mentality held him back. I approached Beerus and patted him on the shoulder. He looked at me and narrowed his eyes, then widened them. You. It seems you are filling that guy's role nicely. Whatever, I'm sure you won't need to do your job, at least with me. I won't destroy planets for no good reasons. Was coughed behind Beerus, but Beerus just chuckled and sweat dropped at the cough. Beerus wasn't intimidated by my power, but by my status as the new Buddha. If the Buddha of the universe couldn't hold the God of Destruction back, he could report him to the Grand Priest and Zeno. After the dispute over pudding was over, Beerus got up from his chair and walked towards Gohan. Gohan looked at Beerus and asked, Lord Beerus-sama, what do I owe the honors? Gohan like always was very polite. Beerus smirked at Gohan showing his teeth fully and said, I can feel your power, kid. Let's fight. Gohan shook his head, but he couldn't really decline Beerus as it would be impolite of him, and it would also anger the destroyer. He looked towards me and I nodded at him indicating that he can fight Beerus and I would interfere if things have gone too much out of hand. Beerus waited for Gohan to take the first action. The unlocking of potential didn't stop the Super Scion transformations, it just brought his base power level so high he didn't need to transform to deal with Super Bu in the original. Right now he got his potential unlocked and had to fight with Beerus so he couldn't hold anything back against him. He started to power up as he transformed into a Super Scion 1 then 2 and after a while, he transformed directly into 3. His power level was off the charts but Beerus didn't look that impressed. His eyes glinted with interest, but it was doused off the moment Gohan stopped transforming. Beerus continued to look at Gohan and said with a bored tone, Is this all you got? You don't resemble the Super Scion God I dreamt about at all. Gohan didn't know what to say at Beerus' words, so he just reverted to his normal form. Beerus was extremely disappointed in Gohan's lack of power. He yawned again and was ready to go back to eat, but Goku came out of nowhere with Vegeta in tow and said, What about us, Lord Beerus? The two fighting maniacs were ready to take Beerus on. Beerus squinted at both of them and waved his hand as he would do at some annoying flies. Hey, I saw your faces in my dream, but I didn't fight you whatever I ate, and I need to exercise a bit. Give your best, and I'll make sure I won't beat you too hard. Goku and Vegeta immediately powered up to their Super Saiyan 3 form and attacked at the same time. 
It seems since their last fusion they took a liking in fighting in tandem. I wonder how did Vegeta put his pride down to fight alongside Goku. Beerus blocked all of their attacks with his palm or diverted them. He looked bored as he put his other hand towards his mouth and yawned. He flicked both of their foreheads, and they plummeted down like two sacks of potatoes. They both clutched their foreheads as they reverted to their normal form. Yamchu threw both of them a senzubin each. Beerus was ready to get back to his table but Goku and Vegeta stopped him again. Well it was more Goku than Vegeta. Beerus-sama we still have something to show you. Beerus looked at them and narrowed his eyes at both of them. He was getting bored with them. But he allowed them one more chance. Well, I still didn't finish digesting all the food. Okay, show me your last trick. Goku immediately dragged Vegeta to him, but Vegeta shook his head with a red face and told him, Kakarot, there is no threat to our planet. You can't make me do that stupid dance. But Vegeta, if we can last enough fighting him, we might be able to make a breakthrough. You know, we can't do it by ourselves. Even when fighting him at the same time, we get the same experience when fused. Just think about it. Vegeta closed his eyes in thought as Beerus continued yawning. Even though his sleepiness wore off, he was bored. Vegeta opened his eyes and entered the dancing stance. Goku grinned at him and entered the same stance. Both of them touched their fingers at the same time as they became one entity. Beerus looked at them with interest, their power level was extremely high now, and that was just their base forms, they might even make him even exert himself to 15% of his true power if they went all out. Gogeta smirked at Beerus and fully powered to Super Saiyan 3. They had only 3 minutes in this form, so Gogeta immediately used instant transmission to appear in front of Beerus. Beerus was caught off guard, got smacked in the face by Gogeta's fist. A red mark appeared on his nose as Beerus attacked back with an angry look on his face. They both started to punch each other at speeds only me Gohan and Whis could see. Gohan widened his eyes as he observed the fight. He knew he couldn't do anything in this fight even if he fought with 200% of all his power. After the three minutes were up they defused and fallen back on the deck. They were both panting and Beerus was annoyed at their state. He was just getting heated up for a fight. Beerus looked at them and shook his head afterward. Seems my dream was wrong. There's no Super Saiyan God. Maybe not yet. He took another glance at Gohan and was ready to leave with Whis. Bulma already packed some food for both of them. I coughed to attract everyone's attention and said, I know of a way one of the Scions here can achieve the Super Saiyan God form. Beerus widened his eyes while the Scions started to gather around me. I made them gather around each other and hold each other's hands. With the combination of Raditz and Nappa, there were enough Scions to perform the Super Saiyan God ritual. All was left was to decide who would become God. Vegeta, of course, wanted to become a Super Saiyan God. But Goku interjected and said, Beerusama did go after Gohan first. Let's try to make him a God. He also has the highest potential out of all of us. Vegeta scoffed but didn't deny the claim about potential. He nodded his head after some time but said afterward, Next time I will be the one who gets to become a Super Saiyan God. Goku laughed and said, It's okay Vegeta if there's the occasion you can get the next opportunity. All the Saiyans gathered around Gohan and I started to instruct them, Pour out your heart into him. Not your key otherwise he won't achieve the transformation. All of them closed their eyes as they started to try and make Gohan a Super Saiyan God. Unfortunately, their first try was a failure, they could only pour their key into him, even though he became way stronger than before, even a bit more than Gogeta. Beerus just shook his head, indicating that it wasn't what he wanted. The second try was a failure too. They didn't grasp the concept of heart, but like always the third try was the charm, Gohan's fiery red aura and hair attracted Beerus's attention. He nodded to himself and said, This is more like it. This is genuine God key. He approached Gohan. But Gohan didn't look at Beerus. He clenched his fists and unclenched them. He did some katas too before looking at Beerus. Gohan smiled at Beerus and said, Beerus-sama, let's not fight on the planet. We might damage it. Beerus nodded his head. 
He could feel Gohan was adapting to the God Key at alarming rates. They both started to fly out of the planet's range, I continued to watch them along with Whis. I was ready to interfere should the universe be in danger. Goku and Vegeta strained themselves to try and observe the fight as well. Up above the planet in the galaxy Gohan and Beerus already started clashing. The shockwaves were immense but fortunately, they weren't near any habited planets or otherwise all of them would be destroyed and their population killed. Gohan dodged a key infused claw from Beerus and threw a right hook at Beerus's head. Beerus blocked it with his palm and hit him in the chest with his other hand. Gohan's back exploded as a hole appeared in his GI. He coughed a bit of saliva, but it didn't affect his fighting ability at all. He was still adapting to the change in key. He would sometimes underestimate his power and hit Beerus when he thought he wouldn't sometimes he would overestimate it. But he grew stronger at extremely high speeds. Beerus was amazed at Gohan's potential, and he praised him. You are the second most talented guy I ever met in my life. Gohan chuckled and answered. You are overpraising me, Beerus-sama. Beerus shook his head and continued. Whatever now that we are warmed up, let's get a bit more serious. Gohan's eyes hardened, and he nodded. They both clashed their fists in an attempt to overpower each other. A giant shockwave started to be felt through the whole universe. It was the clash of fists that could destroy the whole universe if it wasn't contained. The Supreme Kais were alerted, but they couldn't do much. Old Kai telepathically contacted Gohan to tell him to stop, but Gohan didn't listen. I appeared nearby their fight and contained the shockwave using a Buddhist technique that stopped all the shockwaves from spreading further. The shockwaves were then extinguished in my hands. I didn't activate my supreme bodhisattva mode as it wasn't needed. I could fight Beerus as Gohan did now without it. If I activated I'm sure Beerus would have to get serious. Right now, Beerus was still playing around. Beerus and Gohan fought back and forth as the shockwaves didn't threaten the existence of the universe anymore. Gohan hit a wall after a while. He couldn't increase his power anymore. It was the peak of the Super Saiyan God. Beerus shook his head. In his dream, the Super Saiyan God flicked him on his forehead and it hurt quite a lot. This wasn't the full potential of Gohan. He attacked him at higher intervals and started to overwhelm him. Gohan gritted his teeth and started to fight back, but Beerus just dodged everything easily. Gohan couldn't do anything else but tank the attacks. After a continuous beating of a few minutes, Gohan's scarlet red aura and hair were gone. He was in his normal Super Saiyan form as he continued to fight Beerus unknowing of his lack of God Key. Beerus sighed at Gohan's potential. His body remembered the feeling of God Key and attempted to keep his power at the same level. But this state couldn't remain for a long while. After a few more minutes, Gohan coughed out blood as his normal Super Saiyan transformation faded as well. Beerus stopped fighting him and his aura returned to normal. He was content with the fight. Even though it didn't make him exert himself fully, he did digest almost all the food. I took Gohan away from Beerus and fed him a senzu bean. Gohan was still conscious, so he swallowed the bean immediately. He coughed a bit and got up. We were already back on Earth. The Z fighters looked at Gohan and then at Beerus, Goku and Vegeta already knew the results so they didn't comment on it. Beerus walked towards Whis and told Gohan, Good fight kid. Your potential is amazing. Can't wait to fight you again someday. They both left in a multicolored key aura. Gohan got back to Videl's table and sat down. Everyone else got to him and started to ask him about the fight. Gohan explained to his best ability on how things worked out, and I chimed in from time to time as well. After the explanations, Videl got up and said, Guys, I have an announcement to tell all of you. Everyone looked towards Videl with curious eyes. Videl coughed and blushed as all the eyes from the party were looking at her. I'm pregnant. Hercule started to dance around at these words and said how he will be a grandfather. Goku was pretty happy himself. Vegeta scoffed while Bulma, Lazuli, Jaika, and Chi-Chi congratulated Videl. Gohan already knew so he didn't say much. 
After Bulma's birthday party was over, everyone got back to their own homes. But Goku and Vegeta had other things on their mind. As soon as Wiss came to get some more food, both Goku and Vegeta implored him to train them. After some persuading and food, Vegeta got him some new food he didn't try before and Goku gave him some food he cultivated himself at home. Wiss took them under his mantle and left with them towards Beerus' planet-slash-realm. Beerus was taking a nap when they arrived. At first, they would have to do chores around the planet before Wiss would start their true training. By the time a day ended they would be exhausted. But the combination of environment and hard training which made them do start to unearth their potential again and break the walls they reached again. With the extra help of some of the incense they got from the lookout it made their training even smoother. I was on earth meditating as my supreme bodhisattva mode was on. My body had fully adapted to the sacred key and the transformation started to drain less and less to the point it was almost negligible. My power also didn't increase as fast anymore. At this level the only thing that could make me even stronger was Ultra Instinct. But from the information I found in the mantra, I realized I couldn't learn Ultra Instinct. But there was a different mode I could learn that was comparable to Ultra Instinct. It took the Supreme Bodhisattva mode to the next level. It was called Enlightened Buddha Instinct, the contents were similar to Ultra Instinct but instead of it being able to attack and defend without thinking, to attain the Buddha Instinct it was required to sever the seven emotions and six desires to attain enlightenment of oneself. Just like how Buddha attained enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. This wasn't going to be something easy for me to do though. To attain complete emptiness of one's emotions, it wasn't humanly possible. I'm not sure if I could attain the enlightened Buddha instinct, but Buddha left many doors open if one closed itself another one would open. Maybe there was a variant of the Buddha instinct which I could learn. I tried to find some more information through the mantras, but all it said was that if I couldn't follow the original Buddha's path, I had to create a new one myself. So that meant I had to create a technique comparable to ultra instinct by myself. After Beerus' and Gohan's fight and the departure of the two Scions things were peaceful on Earth, I dedicated all of my attention on trying to make a technique similar to the Ultra Instinct, but it was very hard. The Ultra Instinct was supposedly created by the great priest then taught to all of his children who in turn taught the gods of destruction. It was unknown how strong the Grand Priest was, but speculations were that even if all of his children fought him at the same time, he still wouldn't have to get serious. The only one who could destroy the Grand Priest was Zeno himself. Lazuli entered my chamber as I stopped training in gravity. My body was nearing the limits of strengthening. My key could still be improved though. Lazuli approached me, laid down near me and said, Krillin, shouldn't we have some more family fun? It's been quite a while since the last vacation. The children want to travel some more. I nodded at her and got up from the ground. She was right. It's been quite a while since the last family holiday. I got everyone's attention inside the house and started talking. On Lazuli's notice, I realized that it's been quite a while since our last family holiday. So I decided to ask you all, where do you want to go now? Jaika immediately piped up saying, we should visit Space Australia. Ryu should know of his roots. She continued, also, let's invite Jis too. I bet he misses home a bit. I nodded towards her and asked the others, What's your opinion on Jaika's suggestion? Lazuli shook her head and indicated there was no problem. The children were pondering, but Ryu immediately shouted after a while of thinking, Let's go to Space Australia. He had a goofy grin on his face. Marin shook her head and responded as well, Whatever if Lil Bro wants to go to Space Australia we can go I guess. Jaika contacted Jis, and he flew as fast as he could to my home. I teleported all of us to Space Australia and took we started taking in the sights. Besides the more advanced civilization things were also quite different in Space Australia. There were mutant spiders 10 meters tall as well as giant blue kangaroos who weren't that friendly. Of course, they couldn't do anything to us. Jis showed his strength to his nephew only for him to be shut down by Ryu doing the same thing. Jis then realized he was weaker than his nephew, and his mood spiraled down. 
I took in space Australia's sights as I flew with my family around the whole planet. We would set up a picnic on the arid plains or the top of mountains. Afterward, we would all play with the children for a while. After two days of fun in space Australia, we got back to Earth. Holidays were good from time to time to let me relax my mind and body. Being always tense wasn't good for training or to increase your power. I got back to trying to create a technique similar to Ultra Instinct. The Buddha Enlightened Instinct was similar to Ultra Instinct, but it severed the seven emotions and six desires. I didn't want to sever my emotions, so I couldn't train in it. However, what if instead of severing them, I would enhance them? I remembered how I didn't use the other faces of the benevolent Buddha stand, and I only used the benevolent state. I started to recreate my Buddha stand, but now instead of only influencing my emotions, I also tried to make it enhance them. It was something that I could work with. I decided to rename the stand to three emotion strengthening. Just like the previous Buddha stand, a Buddha would appear behind my back, but now my face and emotions would be influenced by the face that I would use. Combined with my fully purified sacred key, I could guess it would be kind of similar with the enlightened Buddha instinct. I tried it out since in theory it seemed feasible. I had three modes, the wrath mode, the peaceful mode, and the benevolent mode. The wrath mode gave me the highest power boost at the disadvantage of becoming extremely wrathful. Every one of my enemies would lie dead before me and I could attack allies too. Not a good technique for team fights. The peaceful state cleared my emotions temporarily and gave me extreme defensive capabilities, on par with ultra instincts, well in theory. As for the benevolent mode, it's supposed to combine the defensive capabilities of the peaceful mode and the power of the wrathful mode to gain a balanced state, however, the power would be lower and the defense also lower compared to the full modes of wrath and peace. However, the wrath mode forsakes defense for strength and peace was the reverse. The benevolent combined both of them reaching a perfect balance. To reach this mode, I needed to use the Supreme Bodhisattva mode first then stimulate these emotions to the maximum. Stimulating wrath and peacefulness were easy but combining them and balancing them was another thing. I also fully failed to enter the mode and get the power I wanted however, I was on the right path. I left the training room and decided it was time to go to hell and cleanse the sins of the cold family. I needed some more competent students who I could create the Buddha guard with. I teleported to hell and followed the cold's family special key signature. They were in a different realm where they were cocooned and made to listen to happy songs of friendship and peace. They were all going ape shit at the songs, however. They would have killed all the little critters and birds who were singing if they were free. Little bits of red sin were flowing out of their foreheads as it was cleansed at a very slow pace. While the methods of hell were good, they were very slow. I started to do some special hand seals as I activated my supreme bodhisattva mode. My hands started to glow with a gold-white aura as I finished my hand seals. I aimed the aura at the three cold family members. They started to shout in pain as their sin was forcefully purified. After what seemed like hours of screaming from the cold trio, they finally stopped. I started to do some other hand seals and I put my palm on their foreheads. They disappeared from the cocoons as I tracked their key in the universe. I sped up the process of sin purification and reincarnation. I started to track them in the universe as they reincarnated. I spotted a star that gave birth to a lizard-like being with purple gems on his chest knees and his elbows. He was also very small. It was baby Frisia. On the other parts of the universe, Baby, King Cold and Baby Cooler were born at similar times. I teleported to all of their locations and grabbed them. Their memories were removed during the reincarnation process, so were their evil natures. Now they could be shaped into model citizens of the galaxy. I smiled at them as they started to giggle as babies would. I taught them how to talk and walk and in a few minutes they already learned everything. The growth ability of the cold race was extremely good. In a few days, they started to use energy on their own as their bodies grew at extremely fast speeds. The cold race could live to hundreds of thousands of years. Frisia was a brat at some hundreds of years old, while the other two family members' age was unidentified. Frisia, 
cold and cooler bowed to me as they said in unison, Master! I nodded at them and imparted some special frost demon techniques to them. They would learn it themselves as they grew up. It was an innate talent of theirs, but learning the techniques earlier wouldn't hurt them. After a few more months, they all grew up to their full height and their power level stabilized. Of course, since they trained, their power levels were already higher than when they were evil. Of course, Frisia's power level was the highest. He didn't lose any of his previous talents. He was already trying to comprehend how to transform into his golden form. I gave them special instructions to protect the earth and the universe, and left them to travel the universe and learn on their own. I made sure to put some marks on them so I knew whatever they would do. Even though their sins were cleansed and memories gone, the frost demons had a little tendency for destruction, evil, and chaos. I, of course, taught them some Buddhist techniques which they could chant whenever they would feel these urges in them. After mastering the techniques, these emotions would forever disappear from their psyches. On the borders of the universes, Six and Seven Kampa and Beerus were arguing over something. Vedos and Wis looked at the pair of brothers and shook their heads at the same time while sighing. The brothers were arguing which of the universes had better food. Kampa won the last time they argued over this topic. And now it was Beerus's turn to win because he got his hands on Earth's food. Kampa started to whine and asked Vedos if Earth existed in their universe. But Vedos responded with, Yes, the planet called Earth indeed existed in our universe. But it was destroyed during an internal planetary war. Kampa started to sulk, but Beerus hit the table they were both situated at and growled at Kampa. I know you have been snooping around my universe in search of something. Spit it out, you fat bastard. You know that other gods of destruction aren't supposed to visit the other universes without permission. Kampa started to sweat intensely, but he didn't hold anything from Beerus. I found these giant balls in my universe and with some information and the help of Vedos I realized that they could grant wishes if seven of them are gathered. But the thing is the dragon balls are shared between universes. Beerus was ready to throw himself at Kampa, but Wiss held him back. Beerus stopped struggling against Wiss's hold and said to Kampa, You bastard! You wanted these balls for yourself? If they are shared between the universes, I want to get a wish myself. Kampa stuck his tongue out and made faces at Beerus, but Vedos hit him over the head with her staff and said, Stop making faces like that, Lord Kampa, or your face will remain stuck like that. Kampa nursed the bruise that appeared on his head, and he wanted to make faces at Vedos too. But he stopped at the thought of being hit on the head again. Beerus wanted to fight for the ownership of the Dragon Balls, but was intervened and said, Remember the last time you fought? You both ended up in a draw and half of the universe you fought in was destroyed. If not for my and Vedo's interference, both of you would have been heavily punished by the Grand Priest and Zenosama. They both started to grumble, but Beerus's eyes started to shine as an idea came to his mind. He remembered Gohan and the two others that started to train on his planet. There were quite a few strong mortals in Universe 7. Beerus told Kampa, Yo, Kampa, we can't fight, but what if the mortals from our universes fought in a tournament? The team with better mortals get the balls, what you think? Kampa was pondering over those words and after a while nodded his head and said, Of course, my universe is better than yours anyway. Just you wait, I already have all of the balls. After I win the tournament, I will just use them. Ha ha ha. Beerus left with Wiss with an annoyed look on his face but the annoying look turned into a toothy smile. He could almost feel the super dragon balls in his claws. He was certain in his victory, with the potential of Gohan Goku and Vegeta, he was sure of his win in the upcoming Universal Tournament. Kampa grumbled under his breath as he and Vados had to personally go to the strongest people in Universe 6 to hire them. Kampa was lazy by nature, so he didn't want to travel in the different parts of the universe even though he practically didn't do anything because Vados was the one who flew them over. Vados flew them over to different planets including Planet Sadala, just like in the anime, Kaba was recruited. On a yellow planet made of gum properties, a yellow bear wearing a red top and boots agreed to the destroyer's request. 
On a planet made of metal and granite, where scalding red-hot magma was running around the edges of the ground, was where another fighter for the Universe 6 team was recruited. On a futuristic-looking planet in a business meeting room stood a guy that looked similar to Frisia, but his skin and gem-like embeddings around his body were deep blue and a lighter shade of blue instead. He hummed a little song as he was looking at a report of a planet's rebellion being quelled. Vados and Kampa appeared directly in front of him and said, You are Frost, right? I need you for something. Frost was very surprised at the uninvited guests, but he acted cordially with a smile on his face. With what might I help these guests? Kampa put a no-nonsense face on and started to exhibit some key. I need you to fight for me in an interuniversal tournament, of course. There will be rewards if we win. Frost was shaking and sweating as he felt the destroyer's power. His power level wasn't much higher than Frisia's compared to Kampa who was only a hair weaker than Beerus. The difference was enormous. Frost smiled at Kampa and agreed immediately he was going to get rewarded if he won anyway so he wasn't losing anything. After the duo left, Frost's smile turned into a frown. He had no time for such trivial things, as he was still trying to conquer the universe through his charitable acts. On an unknown planet, a purple-skinned humanoid who wore a light purplish armor on his body was meditating. Kampa and Vados appeared before him, but before Kampa could say anything, the humanoid opened his red eyes and looked at both of them. What do I owe the honors of being visited by the great Lord of Destruction himself? Kampa huffed and said, I need to hire you for some work hit. Hit nodded and said, The pay will be according to the difficulty, as you know how I work. Vados didn't let Kampa continue the conversation and interjected. This time it's not an assassination job. We need you to fight in an interuniversal tournament in which killing is not allowed. You are one of the strongest mortals in this universe, even if we exclude your killing techniques which are your main ones. Hit kept a stoic face as he said after he heard everything. The price won't be small then. I will tell you what I want after we get to the tournament. Though, as I'm not decided yet. Hit was a hired gun. As long as the price was right, he would do what he was instructed. Kampa and Vados left. They had to start constructing the tournament stage on the borders of the two universes. Back in Universe 7, Wiss and Beerus directly made their way to Earth with Goku and Vegeta in tow. Goku was excited openly at the promise of a tournament where he could fight strong guys. Vegeta was stoic on the surface, but inside he was boiling with excitement as well. All of them arrived at Earth and made their way towards Capsule Corporation, where they invited all the strong fighters on Earth. Universe 7 strongest fighters were all located on Earth, so there was no reason for Beerus and Whis to go search the universe. Beerus looked at the Scions and Human Z fighters he was sure he wanted Goku Vegeta and Gohan in his team, that left two spots open though. Both him and Kampa made all the rules which weren't that many. No weapons, no healing items, no killing, being out of bounds also means you lost the match. Simple rules, just like the Tenkechi Budokai ones. The trio of Scions were put to stay behind Beerus and Whis. There were still a few days till the tournament would start, so they had enough time to choose who else was going to fight. Beerus continued to observe everyone and then said to Whis, Whis, who else do you think is better to fill up the rest of the team? Wiss hummed and put a finger under his chin and thought about it before saying, Well, Majin Buu could be the fourth fighter for sure, but he isn't here. Maybe get him here and see if he wants to come. I couldn't join the Interuniversal Tournament due to me having a god position unless instructed to. Gods couldn't fight other gods unless there were serious reasons. Buu, however, was already on his way to Capsule Corporation, but he stopped at a hot dog stand to eat some hot dog after the stand ran out of hot dog he was asked to pay. But he had no money. After some shenanigans including a paid street fight, Bu paid the money he owed to the vendor and was back on his way towards Capsule Corporation. Yamcha was instructed to go and get him, but he came minutes later with Bu ahead of him. Yamcha smiled sheepishly scratched the back of his neck and said, 
Well, this guy was on his way here already, but he got sidetracked. We met nearby, and he took the lead. Even though Yamcha trained with everything he got, he still couldn't rival Bu at all. After the beating he took from Beerus, Bu trained some more, and now I could feel he was just a tiny bit weaker than Gohan in his Super Saiyan God form. Of course, from what I could feel, both Goku and Vegeta attained the higher forms already. However, they still weren't a match for me. Maybe if they fused I could have a good fight, they could even fight Beerus for some time when they fused. Now there were four people in the team, Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and Bu. Bu said he wanted to fight strong guys too. And he also said that he wanted to be rewarded with food if he wins. Easy enough, the Scions just wanted to fight stronger opponents so they had no wishes. The objective of the tournament was already explained, but not everyone cared about the Super Dragon Balls that much. I was also not interested that much in them. I already had everything else that I needed, a family, strength high enough to protect everyone and I already made the universe mortal level higher than before. Unknown to me, it was still a hair away too little of being exempt from the tournament of power. I was also invited to the tournament between universe 6 and 7, but to be a referee and not as a fighter. The last fighter wasn't a surprise, it was Piccolo. Piccolo was the strongest out of all of the other Z fighters after his fusion with Kami, his potential exploded and his strength increased at high speeds. Even though he wasn't at a god's level, yet he was starting to approach that level. It also seemed he trained with Gohan from time to time. Beerus smirked at his team composition, with how strong these guys were he thought that he would surely win the tournament and get the Dragon Balls for himself. Kampa was laughing as he thought the same thing back at the arena that was starting to get constructed by Vados. Wis took a strange cube out of his staff and made all of us board it, he started to channel his key into it, and it took into the universe at high speeds. After an hour of travel, we reached an uninhabited planet and it was obvious how bare it was since you could see the stage created by Vados from space. Around the planet were seven other planetary-sized orbs with stars in them, the Super Dragon Balls. We were taken to the stage first to make sure that Kampa didn't do anything underhanded. That's what Beerus said. I wasn't sure why he needed for all of us to be here though. Maybe he just wanted to show off his team's strength? Kampa looked around at us and scoffed he didn't think that our team could beat his, of course. All of the participants' power levels were lowered so that it could make the enemy let their guard down. This was Gohan's plan, which everyone surprisingly followed for some reason. Even Vegeta and Goku didn't care about such things. After making sure everything was alright, Wis helped with the construction of the stage and after a few tens of minutes everything was done. The stage wasn't that different compared to the world's tournament, only the materials were different even though they looked similar. I tried to puncture the stage with my finger, but it held pretty well against my power even considering that I didn't use my supreme bodhisattva mode it was still pretty impressive. We made our way back to Earth and I enjoyed some quality time with my family while also trying to train in the three emotions enhancement technique. I could use the wrath mode and peaceful mode after a few tries, but it drained heavily on my energy every time I failed to enter the states. Combining them was even harder. Back on Beerus' planet Goku and Vegeta were sparring in their Super Saiyan Blue mode after a while both of them stopped in mid-air and closed their eyes. Their blue auras started to disappear as it got internalized. Both of them gasped afterward and fell from the sky. They were on their way to Master Super Scion Blue. Whist scared and shook his head. Both of them already wore their super outfits. Vegeta wore his gray armor, while Goku wore his GI. Both of them had the signature of Whist on them. Beerus was yawning, laying on a chair and eating a cheesy pizza. Piccolo was sparring with Gohan in a wasteland on Earth while Bu was doing some shadow sparring with Hercule. Kampa was already gathering all of his fighters as well. Hit's eyes started to glow as he saw the cube that was supposed to take them to the tournament location. He told Vados directly, I want this cube as my payment. Vados looked at Hit but didn't comment, there was also a bunch of gold and other things in the cube, those were the rewards for the others. The tournament was a few hours away from starting, so we all were already on our way towards the barren planet. There we met directly with the opponents that the others had to fight. Vegeta scoffed at Badamo and Magetta seemingly thinking they were easy pickings. 
but his eyes narrowed as he saw Kaba. There was something about him that felt familiar to Vegeta. Kampa started shouting. Okay, now that everyone's here, how will the fights go? Beerus put his hands on his ears and grumbled. Too loud, you fool. You don't have to shout. We can all hear you well enough. Kampa started to blush and toned his voice down by a bit. Okay, so how will the fights go on then? Since I was the referee, I decided to make them lot based just like the world's tournament I got up from the stands and got to the middle of the stage. Out of the stands of Universe 6 jumped out none other than my fellow disciple Lee Sin. He smiled and bowed towards me, which I reciprocated. It seemed Universe 6 got themselves a referee as well. I told all of them in a clear tone. I think drawing lots should be the best way to arrange fights. Lee didn't interrupt me. But he said afterward, Lots or just making them fight randomly. There's no difference. Let's just pair them up already. He was right, but I still insisted on drawing lots. He put his hands up and shook his head. He wasn't going to fight me on such a trivial thing. After the lots were drawn, the fights were as following. Badamo vs. Piccolo. Bu vs. Frost. Goku vs. Kabahit vs. Vegeta and Gohan vs. Magetta. Goku smiled towards Kaba while Badamo and Piccolo had an eye confrontation. Bu was ignoring Frost and Vegeta looked at Hit with a superior gaze. Gohan was mumbling something under his breath and analyzing the Iron Golem Magetta. After the fights were decided now, it was time to see who would fight first. After another lot of drawing, the fights were as follows. Bu vs. Frost first, Goku vs. Kaba second, Hit vs. Vegeta 3rd, Badamo vs. Piccolo 4th, 5th, and last was Magetta vs. Gohan. Afterward, the winners of those fights will challenge each other and after everyone from one universe was eliminated, that universe would win. This was a condition made by Kampa. He realized that this way he could increase his chance of winning by betting everything on Hit. I stood in the middle of the stage and started counting. 10, 9, 1 start. Bu and Frost met in midair as I flew up from the stage letting them go at it. Lee was just behind me listening to the fight with interest. Frost and Bu punched each other in the face, but Bu didn't flinch at all while Frost shot over almost getting thrown out of the fighting stage. He balanced himself just a few meters away from being blown out of the stage. He coughed a bit of saliva and started to shout as he powered up. He realized from the first instance that he was overpowered by Buso, he skipped straight to his final form. He looked exactly like Frisia with a different color scheme. He launched himself at Bu, but Bu laughed and enlarged his gloved fist. Frost's eyes widened as the gloved fist approached him. He crossed his arms in an X position and let the fist hit him. This was a really bad decision of him as the fist broke his guard easily and hit him in the chest throwing him out from the stage directly. The fight wasn't interesting at all. Lee yawned as he listened to the fight. Frost couldn't do anything to Bu at all, it was a joke of a fight actually. Bu was already just a little below Super Saiyan God level and Frost couldn't even handle a normal Super Saiyan properly. Kampa scoffed as he glared at Frost who was in a really poor state. Then his sharp eyes looked at Kaba, and he growled at him. If you don't win the next fight you won't have an easy time in the universe. Vados hit him over the head with her staff and said, don't bring down the fighter's morale Kampasama. Also, even if they lost you know you still can't do anything to them. Kaba's sweat dropped at the way Vados was handling the God of Destruction and made his way towards the stage. Frost got back to the spectator stands and grumbled to himself. Goku got to the stage as well as he observed Kaba. A smile appeared on his face as he asked, You are a scion, right? Kaba looked flustered as he answered, yeah. How did you realize that? Goku just pointed at Kaba's furry belt which was his tail. Goku's tail also unfurled from his waist. All the Scion's tails weren't cut due to them all learning how to control their Ozura form. Kaba's eyes widened as he saw Goku's tail. Then he bowed while saying, A fellow Scion, it will be a great honor to fight against you. Goku scratched his chin and said, No need to bow. It's not like I'm Scion royalty like that guy over there. He pointed towards Vegeta. Kaba looked at Vegeta and Vegeta just nodded his head at him in acknowledgement. 
Vegeta wanted to test Kaba himself, but he couldn't do to not drawing the right lot. Goku smiled towards Kaba and entered his battle stance. Kaba entered a stance similar to Vegeta's as Vegeta raised eyebrows at the similar fighting stance. Goku and Kaba launched themselves at each other and started fighting. Goku, of course, didn't use his full power from the start, so their fight was pretty equal. A kick there a clash of fists. Goku dodged a roundhouse kick from Kaba and said, It's time to bring this up a notch, don't you think? They both disappeared from view as shockwaves appeared all around. The fight was getting more intense as time passed. Kampa was on the edge of his seat while Beerus was yawning. Goku didn't even transform into a Super Saiyan yet. This fight was in the bag as well for him. Goku punched Kaba in the stomach as he skidded back a few meters. Kaba grunted as he stabilized himself and threw himself right back at Goku. But Goku dodged all of his punches and kicks easily then said, Well I'm warmed up. Let's go super. Kaba had a questioning gaze but Goku didn't let him ask anything as his power level increased his eyes turned green and his hair blonde. He didn't use his Akari mode though, just plain old Super Saiyan. Kaba scratched the back of his head and Goku looked at him wondering why didn't he go Super Saiyan as well. Kaba responded, Um well, you see, I can't use this super form you are talking about. Goku scratched the top of his head as he reverted from his Super Saiyan state, while Beerus got up from his seat and shouted at Goku, Just end the fight you fool. You are way stronger than him. No reason to draw it out. Goku looked at Beerus and said, But Beerus-sama, he is a fellow scion. I can speak for both me and Vegeta that I wouldn't feel right if I fought him without him being at his best. Vegeta nodded his head. He had the same thoughts as Kakarot. Goku's eyes suddenly changed as they turned feral. His hair spiked up more, and his power level increased way more than before. He appeared directly in front of Kaba and hit him in the stomach, Bile and saliva were spat out as Kaba fell to the floor. Kaba's eyes widened in pain and surprise as he looked at Goku and asked, Why? Goku scoffed with a bored look on his face and said, You are just too weak, whatever I might go to Universe 6 and see if anyone there is stronger on your planet. If not I might as well destroy it. There's no need for weak scions. Vegeta smirked in the stands, that was the same thing he wanted to do to encourage Kaba. Kaba gritted his teeth as he got up from the stage but Goku kicked him in the head and kept him down. Kaba's eyes immediately started to change from their black color to green his aura started to flicker as did his hair color. Goku smirked inside. But he kept his foot on Kaba's head as he continued saying, Whatever. I might just end it now since you are so weak. He charges a bit of key in his palm and was ready to fire it at Kaba. But suddenly Kaba's power level exploded and he threw himself at Goku and threw a flurry of punches at him. The punches were all fueled by a rage, so even though they were stronger they weren't coordinated at all. There was no technique in them so Goku easily dodged everything. Kaba was ballistic but Goku counterpunched him right in the face, and he flew back making him cool off a bit. Goku said afterward with a smile on his face, Congratulations, you are a Super Saiyan now. Kaba looked down at his hands as he clenched them and felt the power he now possessed. Goku kept a grin on his face as he watched Kaba analyze himself. After a few seconds Kaba looked towards Goku and bowed towards him again. Now this bow was really from the heart. Goku just kept smiling, then said, It's okay. Now let's continue our fight. They both got right back at it as they fought back and forth. Even though Kaba still couldn't match Goku at all, he could still get hit in here and there. Even though it didn't affect Goku's fighting capability at all, it was still something considering Goku's Super Saiyan was mastered and combined with the Ikari mode. Goku immediately shouted as electricity started to arc around his body. He pushed Kaba back then, punched him in the chest, throwing him directly off the stage. He shouted at Kaba. After you master the first transformation, train some more and learn this one. Goku reverted and made his way to the stands. Beerus smiled at him and patted him on the back, saying that he did good work. Goku didn't say anything and started to look at Hit. He could feel that the guy was more than he let on. I observed the fights and I wasn't impressed everything was as I predicted. With my interference everyone became stronger than what they were in the original, of course the others won't be a match to them. 
The next match was Piccolo versus the Winnie the Pooh lookalike Badamo. Piccolo looked at Badamo while Badamo made a sign with his hand, putting his thumb near his neck and slashing across it. Piccolo narrowed his eyes as he threw off his weighted cape and turban. They both left a dent in the fighting stage and the whole planet started to shake. Piccolo could lift quite a lot. Piccolo started to do some warm-up exercises as Badamo rushed at him. Piccolo just smirked and easily punched him in the chest. But his fist just directly entered his chest and did no damage. Badamo smirked at Piccolo's attempt and tried to grab him and throw him off the stage. But all he grabbed was an after image. Piccolo narrowed his eyes as he analyzed Batamo's body composition. It seemed it resembled Majin Buu's, but unlike Buu's strong enough physical attacks seemed to not work at all. It was like he was immune to physical attacks. Piccolo tried some more. He kicked him around like a ball or even tried to punch him in the face, but nothing worked. Badamo kept a large grin on his face, but Piccolo stopped engaging him in a melee fight. He put two fingers towards his forehead and started to charge his special beam cannon. Piccolo's power level started to rise as electricity started to arc around his fingers. Badamo didn't want to let Piccolo continue charging his beam, so he directly threw a right hook at Piccolo's head. Unfortunately for him, his beam was already charged. The special beam cannon hit him head on. But Badamo had a strange smile on his face as the beam was reflected directly back to Piccolo. Piccolo dodged to the right. Surprised by Batamo's body capability, since he couldn't pierce him with beams or hit him with his fists or feet, he decided to just throw him off the stage. Badamo's eyes widened as he felt himself being grabbed easily by Piccolo. Piccolo didn't play around anymore. His power level was starting to rival Gohan's in his Super Saiyan God form. While I was comparing the Piccolo from now with Gohan when he first transformed into a Super Saiyan God, so it was unknown how strong was Gohan now. Badamo was thrown off the stage as Kampa started physically fuming. Smoke was coming out of the top of his head. Vegeta and Hit made their way towards the stage as Vegeta said in a confident tone of voice. I can feel you are the strongest out of this ragtag bunch. After I defeat you, the win is ours. Hit kept silent for a few seconds, then said, You overestimate yourself. Vegeta growled as the countdown finished then transformed directly to his Super Saiyan 2 form and launched himself at Hit. Hit just punched him two times in his chest area as two purple beams came out of his back. Vegeta gasped and clenched his armored chest. Hit narrowed his eyes as Vegeta didn't go down in those two hits. I observed the fight from above and analyzed how Hit used his time skip technique. It was a very useful technique that I wouldn't mind learning. Vegeta shouted as he transformed directly into his Super Saiyan Blue form. His hair turned blue and a similarly colored flaming aura encased him. He threw himself at Hit, but the same thing happened. Now three small beams of energy flew out of three parts of his back. Vegeta coughed blood and Hit wasn't impressed by him. Vegeta closed his eyes as his aura disappeared. Hit thought of this as surrender, and he was ready to give him the final punch that would end this match. Vegeta suddenly smirked as he dodged the punch. Hit's eyes widened as his fist was dodged. Vegeta counterattacked by punching Hit in the middle of his chest pushing him towards the edge of the stage. Hit disappeared from the edge of the stage and appeared near Vegeta ready to use his time skip technique again. But Vegeta dodged again and said, I have realized what you are doing. Kampa wanted to rip his hair off his head. But he had no hair. Hit was his trump card. If he lost now that meant the match was over and the Super Dragon Balls were lost. Beerus started laughing very loudly and started making faces at Kampa. Kampa immediately wanted to get up and have a brawl with Beerus, but Vados whacked him on the head with her staff again. Three bumps appeared directly on his head. Did I see that right Vados used Ultra Instinct to discipline Kampa? Back to the fight, Hit started to shout as well as he started adapting to Vegeta's power. The fight was getting more intense with time as little purple beams of ki started to appear more and more often on Vegeta's back. Vegeta growled as he tried to counterattack, 
but after Hit adapted to his power, he couldn't stop his punches anymore. Goku observed the fight as his eyes darted back and forth. I'm pretty sure he was already making a plan on how to fight Hit. Gohan too was observing the fight, making a plan for himself as well. Finally, with one more punch to the chest, Vegeta collapsed as his transformation reverted. Hit finally won, but he was gasping for air. It seemed he wouldn't be able to fight at 100% during the next fight. It was time for Gohan vs. Magetta. Magetta's mechanical body dropped itself on the stage as it made it shake. Gohan flew on the stage as well as he entered a stance combined from the turtle style and my style. Magetta didn't say anything as he started to spew lava from the hole that was its mouth. Gohan dodged the lava easily as he charged a Kamehameha in his hands and shot it over at Magetta. Magetta's body, however, was extremely sturdy and he easily tanked the Kamehameha. Gohan's eyes narrowed as he tried to punch him, but he grimaced as the damage from the punch was reflected on his fist. Magetta started to laugh in a robotic voice and tried to punch Gohan. Unfortunately for him, due to his large size and mechanical body, he was very slow. Gohan tried everything he could in his base form, then he shook his head and he directly transformed into his Super Saiyan 2 form. He put two hands over each other and put them over his head and started to charge some yellow key in them. Magetta started to charge his beam in his mouth as lava started to bubble inside of him. Gohan directly threw out his beam as it clashed in midair with Magetta's lava beam. They both started to push at each other. While Gohan was in advantage Magetta wasn't letting himself be pushed that easily. Gohan smirked and powered up to Super Saiyan 3, pushing Magetta out of the stage and directly winning the match. Gohan sighed and he reverted to his base form. Out of all universe's six fighters the only one remaining was hit. Now he could be challenged by Bu, Goku, Piccolo, or Gohan. Gohan and Goku said practically at the same time, I challenge you hit. Father and son looked at each other and then started to talk. Gohan let me fight hit. I think I have already figured out the most of his fighting style. Dad, I think I'm more suited to fight hit. Why don't you let me fight him? They started to argue. But Beerus came over and bonked both of them on the head and said, Play rock, paper, scissors to decide. They played rock, paper, scissors, and Gohan won. It seemed he knew his father fairly well, so he guessed what would Goku choose. Gohan made his way back to the stage and Hit did the same. During the fight between Magetta and Gohan, Hit could rest a bit even though he wasn't at a full 100%, he was still above 70%. Gohan entered his fighting stance as Hit entered a boxer stance. He seemed to get serious and wanted to end things fast in this fight. Gohan smirked as he observed Hit. He was ready for whatever Hit was going to throw at him. Gohan and Hit were ready to launch themselves at each other, but suddenly out of nowhere below me, and Lee a multicolored light appeared. Out of it stepped a little child looking humanoid with a round purple and blue head with an outfit that had the same colors. Behind him were two guys who had a similar outfit in different colors. Their skins were green and only their eyes were shown as their mouths were covered by their outfits. They also wore golden pointed hats on their heads. Wisvedos, Kampa and Beerus immediately bowed towards him and said while sweating intensely, We greet Zeno-sama. Lee and I immediately did the same thing and said in unison, We greet Zeno-sama. Zeno looked at us and said in a childlike voice, Who are you two? I don't remember you. Of course, he wouldn't remember us since he never met us. But I guess he could feel the god key that was coursing through our bodies. One of his guards got nearer to him and started to whisper something to him. Zeno nodded his head, smiled then said, Aha, I see you are Discus. Disciple? Disciples, yes, of my former friend. I guess if you are his disciples, you can be my friends as well. I sweat dropped, I didn't know how to act towards this little guy who could destroy all of the universes by snapping his fingers. But Lee approached him first and said, Sure Zeno sama me and my fellow disciple would enjoy being your friends. I nodded my head and followed his lead. Keeping this little childlike being happy was the thing that kept all the universes in existence. 
the gods of destruction and angels immediately felt like a weight was taken off their shoulders. But Zeno's next question made them feel fear again. What's going on here? Kampa and Beerus were sweating so hard. A mini lake was appearing below them. Goku immediately interjected in, saying, It's a tournament between strong people. Zeno's eyes started shining and said, is the tournament fun? Goku nodded his head and smiled at him. Zeno looked at both Gohan and Hit who didn't do anything. Then he pouted saying, But it doesn't look that fun to me. Kampa immediately said, Zeno-sama they didn't start. Yet after they will start it will be very fun. Kampa smiled inwardly afterward as a plan was made in his mind. Zeno-sama my universe's Hit isn't at full power so your fun won't be as good if he isn't fully rested. Zeno nodded his rotund head of Kampa then said, Let him get to full power then. Kampa did a victory sign towards Beerus and I interjected. There was no reason to wait, I already had a few Senza beans with me. I practically never left the planet without a few in case I found someone injured in need of one. I threw a bean at Hit, and he grabbed it analyzing it with scrutiny. I immediately said afterward, Zeno-sama that little green thing can make it go back to full power, so the fight can start sooner. Zeno smiled at me then said, My friend is a good guy, he knows I want to see the fun sooner. He could feel that Zeno was dangerous. Kampa wanted to interject saying that the bean might hurt Hit, but a look from Zeno's innocent eyes made him shut his mouth. Hit ate the Senza bean and his power level was back to 100%. He clenched his fists and looked at me with a strange look in his eyes. Gohan nodded at me then looked back at Hit with a grin on his face. He was ready for the fight. Zeno couldn't wait anymore. So he immediately said, Start this tournament thing already. Gohan didn't wait for any other instructors as he powered to his Super Scion God form. His hair turned red and a flowing red aura appeared around him. He closed his eyes as the aura disappeared as he internalized it. Hit was already punching him with his key infused fists while he did that. But Gohan smirked while his eyes were closed, and he batted all the fists away with his palm. Hit's eyes widened. He already used the time skip technique as his surroundings turned greenish, and time seemed to crack around him. Gohan continued to keep his eyes closed and only anticipated what Hit would do. He didn't fight back and waited for an opening. Lee was interested in Gohan as he asked me, That guy from your universe? He is quite the thing, isn't he? I just told him three words. Yes, he is. We weren't above the stage anymore as Zeno-sama was just near it, and I think his guardians would feel that we were impolite if we flew above his head. Hit narrowed his eyes at Gohan's ability to be able to deflect his attacks, their power level was quite equal, so he couldn't adapt to increase his power level anymore. Gohan's smirk never faded off his face. As he defended more and more of Hit's punches, the smirk turned into a full-blown smile. He opened his eyes and told Hit, I think I figured out your technique fully, and so did I, after I'll get back on Earth I could train a bit and I should be able to use his time skip technique. Gohan's smile faded off his face as he took a stance similar to Hit's. Oh, I didn't see this one coming, Gohan would do what I think he would do. The green crack time appeared around him as he punched Hit in the chest area three times. Three tiny beams appeared out of Hit's back as his face showed surprise and bewilderment. His technique was used against him. He coughed a bit of saliva and shook off the remnants of the key that remained inside of his body and suddenly smiled. He stopped using the time skip technique as it wasn't helpful anymore he put one arm in front of the other and launched himself at Gohan. Gohan tried to use the time skip technique again but failed. Gohan's face started to redden as a bit of blood seeped out the corner of his mouth. It said, Don't you think you are a bit too confident? I trained in this technique for 5000 years before perfecting it. The time skip had a huge burden on the user body. Gohan using it without any prior training pretty much destroyed his hopes of winning. Gohan dodged around Hit's attacks and did some punches and kicks himself, but Hit was more experienced. He lived more than any of the mortals here and his technique was extremely good. 
His technique was actually on par with Jiren's if I said so myself. I'm pretty sure if Hit was as strong as Jiren an epic fight would have unfolded at the Tournament of Power. Gohan took some punches to his chest and more blood seeped out of his mouth. It seemed Hit targeted the injury left behind by the technique. After a few more minutes of fighting Gohan's Super Saiyan God form reverted by itself, and he kneeled on the stage, it was his loss. Goku observed the fight fully, and now he had a very good plan to defeat Hit. Even though Piccolo was almost near Gohan's strength, it was still too low to take on Hit. Even if he used his stand and Kaioken, it wouldn't be much of a difference. Hit was exhausted himself as he panted hard. The fight wasn't that easy for him. He was an assassin, not a brawler. He did things clean and fast. He wasn't good in protracted fights. I threw him a second Senzu bean which he ate. At first Zeno didn't understand much due to Hit using time skip. But after the time skip technique wasn't used anymore his eyes started shining as he took the fight in. He enjoyed it. Goku made his way to the stage and bowed towards Hit. He respected Hit's power and seniority as he heard he trained his technique for 5,000 years. Goku immediately transformed into his Super Saiyan Blue form with his aura internalized at the same time. His body buffed a bit more after his aura internalized, and he threw himself at Hit. Goku immediately dodged a fist that was going for his chest. Hit narrowed his eyes and realized he couldn't use his time skip properly against Goku either. He shouted as the fight turned into a brawl. They both punched each other in the face as they skidded to the edges of the stage. Then both grabbed the stage with their hands and threw themselves at each other again. Zeno was clapping his hands and laughing at the fight. He was shouting, Go man in orange go! It seemed he liked Goku. After a few minutes of fighting Goku said, Okay this warm up is done. It's time for the main course don't you think so? Hitsan? Hit smiled at Goku's words as he started to shout. His power level increased to rival Goku's and even starting to get above. Goku thought to himself, So shouting increases his power level as well? Goku's power level started to increase as a red hue appeared around him. His internalized aura shot out of him at an incredible height as he said, Kaioken! Hit's eyes widened and he responded, Kao what? Goku immediately arrived in front of Hit and started a punch-kick combo, hitting him in the stomach with a kick sending him in the air then appearing above him and hitting him in the back sending him straight in the stage making it shake and break as spider webs cracks started to appear in it. Goku didn't give time to get up as he charged a Kamehameha at him and shot it directly at him. The Kamehameha hit the stage directly. Dust that concealed the results of the fight appeared. As the dust cleared Hit was nowhere to be seen. Hit suddenly appeared above Goku and tried to punch him in the back with a key infused fist. But Goku rotated midair and met his fist with his own, overpowering him again. Goku shouted, Kaioken times 10. His aura intensified as his power level increased again. Hit's eyes widened again even more than before. He could feel Goku's raw power that was emitting from his aura. He couldn't even prop up a decent defense before he was pummeled in the stomach. Then in the head. He was almost out of the stage, but he grabbed a corner of the stage and pulled himself up. He grumbled as he spit some blue-colored blood. Goku let him get up, but he grimaced as his body spasmed and his Kaioken form reverted. His muscles started to bulge as thick veins appeared on them. A great toll was taken on his body. Hit wanted to take advantage of that, but he suddenly kneeled on the stage. He couldn't move. The punch he took to his cranium rattled his brain. Hit started to feel dizzy as the stage started to spin around him. Goku tried to move in and finish the fight but he started to shout in pain as he tried to move. Now, the one who would win would be the one who recovered first. Hit tried to get up again, but he fell on his butt. Goku tried to move, but his muscles started to spasm uncontrollably again. Goku gritted his teeth and reverted to his Super Saiyan Blue transformation. He used his remaining energy to appear in front of Hit and throw him off the stage while he still could. Hit didn't recover off his dizziness in time and was thrown off the stage. Beerus started cheering as his win. 
while Kampa growled at himself and cursed Beerus under his breath. Zenosama cheered and clapped as he liked the fight very much. He started to run forward and asked Goku, Hey, what's your name? Goku smirked at Zeno and said, My name is Son Goku, what's yours? Zeno smirked like Goku, I'm Zeno. Goku shook Zeno's hand and said, Nice to meet you, Zeno. Beerus was ready to appear directly above Goku and punt him in the stage till his brains became like mashed potatoes. Zeno's guards were ready to do the same but with more lethality involved, but Zeno just laughed and said, I like you, let's be friends. Goku nodded, Yeah, I can be friends with you, Zeno-chan. Beerus thought to himself, Zeno-chan? We are doomed. Kampa thought the same, while Wis just laughed with a palm covering his mouth. The guards stopped when they saw how Zeno liked Goku's company, and just continued to guard Zeno. Zeno nodded at Goku then said, If it's possible, I would like to see more of these tournaments. Goku then said the words that would practically doom and save the universes at the same time. Then why don't you create one yourself? Zeno's eyes shined as he said, Can I do that? Goku smiled at his words and continued, Sure you are. From the reactions of the others, I can see you are a pretty important little guy. I would also like to fight some more strong guys from other universes. If it's possible, it would be great if you made a tournament. Zeno seemingly was ready to create the tournament on the spot, but then he had a thoughtful face for a few seconds before saying, Okay, I will make this tournament. I'm going to leave now. Visit me so we can play before the tournament. Then he left in a bunch of multicolored light with his guards. I sighed as I looked at the spot the guards took. The gods of destruction did the same. Only the angels were more relaxed, of course, they were relaxed if a universe got erased they wouldn't. Kampa grumbled some curses under his breath constantly as he left with the universe six fighters in tow. Hit was still given his cube even though he didn't win, while the others also got some rewards from Vados. Kampa was ready to jump at her, but another staff hit on the head stopped him directly from taking another action. They just left sullenly. We made our way out of the atmosphere of the planet as was stood in front and said as he admired the giant balls that were hovering in space. Beerus-sama, what's your wish? Beerus thought long about it, then said, Summon the dragon and I will tell you the wish then. We started to talk in the language of the gods as he summoned the dragon. Coincidentally, Vegeta said at the same time, He is speaking the language of the gods. The giant super golden dragon appeared, but he didn't say anything. Beerus opened his mouth and he was just ready to tell was his wish. Beerus looked at the giant dragon and was ready to make his wish. He told Wis, Wis, tell him to give me the best food in all the universes. I sweat dropped this wish was not that good so I approached Beerus and told him, Beerus, don't you think that it would be a waste of a wish to wish for something that you could potentially get by yourself? Beerus scratched his head and yawned then said, Eh, I don't care about that. I just want some new good food. Well, Beerus could be explained with one word, cat. He was acting exactly how he looked. Lazy, only wanting to eat and sleep and only sometimes play. I decided to interfere with the wish and told Wis, Maybe... What if we ask the dragon to give our universe protection from Xeno-sama destruction ability, just in case? Wis' eyes narrowed as he looked at me, while Beerus seemed to be in thought, then said, I'd feel more reassured if that would happen, but the food. Wis told the dragon about the wish and his red eyes started to glow, but then he said, To avoid Xeno's destruction ability, I can only make it so if you stay in your universe if you leave it, his ability will still affect you. Then he disappeared along with all of the dragon balls. Beerus then said, Phew, whatever we still have Earth with tons of good food, at least our universe will never be erased. Then he started laughing and patted Goku and Gohan on their backs. Goku started screaming as his muscles were still convulsing from the Kaioken overuse. Not even the Senzu bean could heal him fully. With Wiss's cube and my boat, 
we made our way back to Universe 7, Earth. Beerus and Wiz flew towards Bulma's place to get some food, while the others just got back to their homes. I left for my own home and met with my children and wives. I played some video games with Marin and Ryu and after that had some other type of fun with Lazuli and Jika. Afterward, I just got back to training my three emotions enhancement. With some insights from the fights between Universe 6 and 7 fighters, I could use the two separate forms with more ease, and I was on my way to get the third fused form down. I closed my eyes as I stood in the training chamber. Space started to crack around me as it turned a deep shade of purple. I spit a bit of blood, but my injury was healed immediately. The time skip burden on the body was extremely high, but continuous use would make the body immune to the secondary effects of using it. I continued to train my equivalent of Ultra Instinct and the time skip technique, only leaving the training chamber from time to time. After a few months of training, I could use time skip proficiently with no drawbacks. I wonder how would Hit's face look if he saw how fast I mastered a technique that took him thousands of years to master thoroughly. I left the chamber and I remembered something, well besides that I had to get Broly before the Tournament of Power, he would be a great addition to the team, but it wasn't time to take him off Vampa, yet he liked it there anyway. I teleported to the Supreme Kai's place and met with Kibito, Elder Kai, and Shin. I told them that I had some business in Universe 10 and asked them for the coordinates of the universe. Shin and the others just gave me the coordinates easily. They didn't even ask what I needed to do and told me to have a safe trip. I teleported to Universe 10 and searched the whole universe with my divine key sense. I could feel the Kais and the Lord of Destruction of the Universe, but they couldn't feel me. The Buddha position was unique to people with twin universes and Universe 10 didn't have a twin universe. Thus they lost the Buddha position and they couldn't sense my power properly. The angels could as the Angel of Universe 10 narrowed her eyes and used her key to try to sense me. But I already left the location I was at previously and sealed my key away. Kusu wondered what was that foreign divine key she felt when Rumshi the god of destruction of Universe 10 hiccuped. Kusu patted the pink-skinned elephant humanoid on the back, but Rumshi fell on the floor and said in a pained voice, Kusu, what are you doing? Why did you pat me so hard? He got up from the cracked ground of his realm as a black spot suddenly appeared where Kusu patted him. Kusu put a hand towards her mouth and said, Oh, I'm sorry, Rumshi-sama, it's just that I got distracted by something. Let me heal your back. She waved her staff and the black spot disappeared from Rumshi's back. On a desolate planet which was starting to bud life, Gawasu was instructing his disciple Zamasu on how to work as a Supreme Kai. Zamasu scoffed as he looked at the aboriginals of the world as they battled between themselves. They looked like humanoid dinosaurs, they wore nothing but pieces of cloth to cover their bodies and used unrefined bats to hit each other. Zamasu was a green-skinned Kai who had a mohawk and gray eyes. He wore the Kai's outfit in the colors of dark and yellow with purple undergarments and blue pants. His sash was also light blue. His teacher Gawasu was an old Kai with yellow skin with a similar Kai outfit. His outfit had the same colors as Zamasu, but his sash wasn't tied as loosely. Gawasu opened his mouth as he continued to teach Zamasu. Zamasu, as Supreme Kais, we have to observe the mortals and not interfere in their skirmishes unless it involves the safety of the universe. Do you understand me? Zamasu bowed at Gawasu and said, But teacher these barbarians, these mortals. Why don't we just destroy them? They seem to lack the potential to become civilized beings like us. Gawasu immediately said, Stop that nonsense. That's the job of the God of Destruction and not ours. Let's just get back to our realm. Gawasu shook his head. Zamasu was always like this. His hatred for mortals was unique, to say the least. I observed the interactions between master and disciple and shook my head. Poor Gawasu, he would have been poisoned and died at Zamasu hands if it wasn't for Goku and the others. As they teleported back to their realm, I teleported after them. Gawasu widened his eyes as I let my key out. Ah, uh, it's a fellow god. Might I ask where do you come from? Your divine key is unknown to me. 
Zamasu observed me as I opened my mouth and said, I'm the Buddha of Universe 7. I came here to teach this lad of yours about his job properly. I heard what he said when you taught him about the work of the Supreme Kais. I was in passing back towards my universe, as I had to visit Universe 10 due to some work given to me by Zeno-sama himself. Gawasu started to tremble at the mention of Zeno, while Zamasu wasn't taught about who Zeno was yet. At the confused look in his eyes, Gawasu immediately explained about Zeno's existence. Zamasu narrowed his eyes, then looked at me and bowed while saying, I would like to hear Buddha's teachings. I smiled towards Zamasu then told Gawasu he could leave. What I was going to tell Zamasu was for his ears only. Gawasu just complied and left, but he still left a silver of key to observe what I and Zamasu were going to talk about. I didn't mind, I wasn't going to kill him, I would try the pacifist approach first, but if he moved my hand, I sat cross-legged on the ground and invited Zamasu as well as we stood in the shade of the tree. I started the conversation by asking him something. What do you think about mortals in general? Tell me I won't tell Gawasu. Zamasu looked at me, then said, Mortals have to be left to their own devices. I could see how he gnashed his teeth when he said that, he didn't believe in those words at all. I shook my head and said, Tell me your true thoughts, Zamasu. Zamasu immediately got up and said in anger-induced tone of voice, I find all of these mortals to be pests that need to destroy it. All they do is sully the universe with their being. I nodded at Zamasu and did some hand seals infusing some key into him to make him calm down then said, Zamasu, do you know why you kais create planets? so mortals can spawn on them? Zamasu shook his head he was still being taught by Gawasu, and he didn't finish his training. I could answer him those questions earlier. Let me give you an example. I materialized an empty bowl in my hand which I filled with water, then said, If the bowl is the planet, then the people are the water. I threw the water out of the bowl and cracked it a bit. If the bowl has no reason to exist, what would you do with it? Zamasu had a thoughtful expression on his face and he answered, I should just keep it, right? I nodded and said, Yes, you could keep it. But why would you keep something useless to you? The water gave the bowl a meaning. If it's empty and there's no more water to fill it, why would it exist anymore? I stopped him from thinking anymore and told him directly, If mortals don't exist the planets would just die, the environment needs mortals, beasts to thrive. If you want to kill the mortals, you would destroy the planet as there would be no ecosystem anymore. I know you would kill all the beasts as well by the look in your eyes, don't try to fool me. You would raise the planet to the ground if you could. Zamasu's eyes widened as I saw through his thoughts. Then he asked me, Then do I have to let the mortals do whatever they want? These disgusting beings waging wars on each other, destroying the hard work of the gods and the blessings they were given. I shook my head at his words again, then said, Zamasu, if there is no balance, there will not be any order. With no order, chaos would run rampant. You do know about the god of destruction, right? Zamasu nodded, and I continued, What are you talking about is the god of destruction job? If he saw a planet unfit, he would destroy it. It's that simple. If you want to continue down your path, you would have to become a god of destruction and not a supreme Kai. Your personality is not suited for this job. Gawasu came back suddenly and said, What are you trying to say, sir? Zamasu is a Kai so he should become a Supreme Kai and take my mantle. Zamasu seemed to think about something, and he shook his head at Gawasu. I don't think I truly want to become a Supreme Kai teacher. Gawasu. Gawasu's eyes widened as he said, Zamasu you. It's true. You truly don't want to become a Supreme Kai. Zamasu nodded and said, Yes, it's true. I never wanted to become a Supreme Kai. Seeing these mortals sully the planets you created with your own hands with their acts. I just can't do it. I can't become someone who doesn't interfere in the universe at all. I nodded and stopped my hand seals my sacred key didn't influence Zamasu anymore as it did its job. While it didn't erase his hatred for mortals by 100%, he wouldn't attack them indiscriminately just because they were mortals. I told Gawasu, 
Maybe you can try to talk with your god of destruction and make Zamasu a god of destruction candidate. I can sense his potential is pretty high. It would be a waste of his fighting potential if he didn't do something else considering he doesn't want to take a Kai title. Gawasu nodded it seemed he realized he couldn't make Zamasu a supreme Kai even if he wanted to. If he still pushed him to become one, it would have great adverse effects instead of the desired results. Gawasu bowed towards me and grabbed Zamasu's shoulder then said, Well, I'm off with Zamasu to Rumshisama Realm. I hope you will have a good journey back to your universe. Um, my name is Krillin. Ah yes, Krillin-sama have a safe journey back. Then they disappeared from me, teleporting directly towards the God of Destruction realm. I left Universe 10 and got back to Universe 7, Earth. Another villain turned to good. Well, somewhat good? Chaotic neutral, maybe. Without Zamasu, there won't be a second Zeno and Trunks's future timeline won't be erased. Everything was good. Now next would come the Tournament of Power, and I had the best team in mind for it. It will be a while before the Tournament of Power started, but before then I needed to create the perfect team that would be able to defeat everyone else. Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and Bu were going to be in the tournament for sure. I could also feel that the Cold Family Trio's power was increasing every day. Frieza already attained his golden form, and the other two were on their way to reach the Realm of the Gods as well. Seven participants out of ten, as for the other three Broly was going in for a spot and Piccolo would take the other one. As for the final spot I might be the one who filled it if the Zeno let me fight. My participation depended on Zeno if he wanted to let me fight or not. Of course, if I entered, Lee would enter as well. There was no reason to put Lazuli or Lapis in danger. They should just chill and relax in the universe while we won the tournament. I changed my outfit to a blue GI with black lines and a red undershirt. I wore white boots and a yellow belt. I had my own Buddha symbol on the front and the back of the GI in a white circle. This would be my outfit for the Tournament of Power, hopefully, Zeno would want to see his friend fight as long he said anything the Grand Priest wouldn't interfere. Near Zeno's realm in the Null Void, the Grand Priest was listening towards Zeno's words and said with a thoughtful look on his face, Well Zeno-sama we can make this tournament. We shall invite all the universes and do just like Universe 6 and 7 did make the prize be the Super Dragon Balls. I shall also unlock some of their powers and let them have a wish with no limitations, what do you say? Zeno clapped his hands like the child he was and said, Yes, that would be very good. The Grand Priest then continued, Of course the tournament wouldn't be fun if there were no rules. You shouldn't bother with these things however Zeno-sama, I shall create all the rules and present them to you and explain them as well, so you can agree to them, is that right? Zeno nodded his rotund head and said afterward, While you do that, invite my friend Goku and my other friend to play. I'm bored by myself. The Grand Priest bowed and said, Of course, Zeno-sama. The Grand Priest teleported over to one of the guards and told him to call the Kai of Universe 7 over. Shin came over as fast as he could as he realized he was called over to Zeno's place. He was met with the Grand Priest at the entrance of the palace and then informed of Zeno's invitation of Goku and I to the palace. Shin teleported back to Universe 7 after he bid his goodbyes towards the Grand Priest and called both of us and explained why he was so hurried. We three teleported to Zeno's palace using Kai Kai, and we met the Grand Priest who invited us in the palace while saying, it's rare for Zeno-sama to make friends, of course. There were some exceptions in the past. He glanced at me and smiled. Goku scratched the back of his head and laughed while we continued to follow the Grand Priest deeper in the palace. Guards were standing solemnly watching over Zeno as we entered the throne room. Zeno floated over from his throne and ran towards both of us and said, Both of my friends are here. He took us both by one hand each and we started to play some games he created, of course. He won all of the rounds because he was a master at all his self-made games. It didn't help he didn't explain the rules properly either, but making the little guy happy meant he wasn't going to snap his fingers anytime soon. After a while, it was time for us to go and Zeno was sad. He gave Goku a button which he could use to call him so they could play together and we left the palace. Shin was waiting for us outside the palace and we got back to Universe 7. 
Now it was time to assemble the team. I called the trio of the Cold Clan back to Earth and informed the others to all get to Capsule Corporation. Beerus and Wiss were already there waiting. As we all made our way over, all of them tensed as they felt the powers of Cooler Cold and Frisia approach from the galaxy. When they saw them and felt how stronger they became they looked towards each other than to me not knowing how they got revived. Goku was practically ready to launch himself at Frisia and tear him limb for limb. He was still mad he almost killed Rashi back then. Frisia was different from before, and he didn't have the memories of his past life while he also became more experienced by helping the universe killing evildoers and such with his family. He was still scared by Goku's look in his eyes. I coughed and told all of them telepathically. Guys guys it's okay I used my Buddha power to cleanse them of their sins and reincarnate them as good people. They are all on our side now. They don't even remember their past lives. All of them started to relax as they took another look at the Cold Family Trio. I decided to not make the trio feel like outsiders and made them chat with the others. Beerus started counting and he said, Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, Krillin, Cooler, Cold, Frieza. You aren't we missing one person. Don't tell me you want to get another one of your Earthlings in. This tournament is serious stuff, even though they are way stronger than most of the mortals in this universe, they aren't at the very top. I want only the best in my team. He huffed as he continued to eat some strawberry ice cream. I nodded my head at Beerus's words and said, There's one more guy that I know of. I felt his power level and potential some while ago, but didn't interact with him until now. I can take him over here. Then I pointed at Goku and Vegeta and continued, he is a scion just like you guys, but his potential is nothing to scoff about. You will see when I take him here. I closed my eyes and concentrated on Broly's energy, it was relatively high, and it had a pure attribute to it, it was due to him being very inexperienced and having no desires, he lived like a monk on Vampa, another way smaller power level was with him Paragus his father. I teleported over to planet Vampa and took in the surroundings. It was pretty desolate and not a good living environment. I approached the auras and Paragus started to rub his hands on his eyes thinking he was hallucinating then he shouted, Over here over here he. He started to run towards me, Broly was just behind him. He had a wild mane of hair and a cracked armor from since it was a child, he also had a green pelt that he used as a belt. Paragus wore the same type of armor like him also cracked and visibly destroyed, Paragus' hair was starting to turn gray from age and there were wrinkles here and there, he also sported a mustache. I approached them and said, It's okay. I felt some high power on this planet and I decided to visit it. I pointed at Broly and said, He would be a great addition to a tournament that would affect the fate of the universe. Paragus gasped as he didn't believe his ears. Then he said, But what about Lord Frisia? We also would like to see our planet what happened in all these years. I started explaining to him. The planet trade organization of Frisia's and the Cold family was disbanded while they were turned to the good side. Planet Vegeta was destroyed at Frisia's hands quite a long time ago. Very few Scions survived. Some of the survivors are living with me on my home planet. You should remember Nappa, right? Paragus nodded his head as if in thought and said, That slimy Imperial advisor survived, huh? Broly didn't say anything and just looked at me. I opened a capsule which I took with me from Earth and threw some food and water at the both of them. Broly looked at them with a perplexed look on his face and he tried to bite them. But Paragus stopped him and shown him how he was supposed to open the water bottle and unpack the food. I watched how they interacted and waited till they finished the water and food. I nodded towards them afterward and said, If you are done we can teleport back to my planet. The living environment there is way better. We can also train your son a bit before the tournament began, so he can increase his power level for the upcoming fights. Paragus looked at me then closed his tired eyes and a smile suddenly appeared on his face as he patted Broly's shoulders then said in a quiet voice to the both of them, It's finally the time we leave this cursed planet, son. Broly could talk and said afterward, Do we follow him? Paragus nodded his head and he and Broly approached me. I smiled at both of them and made them put their hands on my shoulders. 
Then I teleported all of us to Earth. Beerus narrowed his eyes as he saw Broly and Paragus then said, This guy you came with is pretty strong but still not strong enough. I smiled towards Beerus and said, You will see after he starts training. Beerus frowned and let it go, the team was created, and it was only a few weeks till the Tournament of Power was supposed to start. The other gods of destruction started to panic as they heard of how their universe would be destroyed if they lost the tournament. When Beerus got the news, he just slapped me on the shoulder then laughed. Very good wish, very good wish. At least the universe and its inhabitants would be safe. Beerus wanted to stay in the universe during the tournament, but the rules said that the gods of destruction should spectate the tournament. I was of course allowed in the tournament, Zeno would surely like to see me in a fight as he didn't see me fight before, and he was very interested in what I was able to do. In the other universes, other teams were made up, Universe 10 had some strange fighters, but their biggest boost was on the God of Destruction candidate Zamasu. Other universes had robots or other things like transforming idols who worked with some type of love energy. Of course, the biggest rival of ours was Universe 11. Jiren opened his eyes as he was meditating inside a gravity chamber. His red aura vanished as he looked at Topo who entered the room and said, Why do you disturb me Topo? Topo immediately got straight to business, saying, There's a multi-universal tournament coming, and we need your help, Jiren. Jiren immediately said, I refuse. Topo coughed a bit, then continued, of course I know you value justice over everything else, but whoever wins will get a wish with no limitations, meaning you can wish for whatever your heart desires. Jiren looked at Topo, closed his black pupilless eyes, and then said after a few more seconds, I will participate now leave and don't disturb me till the tournament starts. Topo smiled towards Jiren and said, Of course Jiren of course. Outside the chamber the clown god of destruction Belmond and his angel Margarita were waiting. When they saw Topo getting out of the chamber with a smile Belmond was relieved and said, Very good with Jiren's help the win is in the bag. Topo nodded and got back to gathering the others from his team. Goku and Broly were fighting back and forth as Goku transformed from transformation to transformation while Broly immediately adapted after a few rounds. Goku sweat dropped at Broly's insane potential. By the time two weeks were up Goku and Vegeta were both bruised and beaten by Broly every time they fought. Beerus's eyes shined as he looked at Broly better. Whisk got up from the table he was enjoying food at and said, The Grand Priest contacted me and said there will some preliminaries fight so Zen Osama can observe the fighters and he chose us to fight some other universe while the remaining universes will be also spectating. Wis then continued, Only half the fighters will be needed for the preliminaries, so please choose whoever will fight now. We have a few hours before we need to get to the preliminaries place. I nodded at Wis then said, Me, Goku, Vegeta, Broly, and Gohan. Beerus narrowed his eyes at me, then said, You are sending the strongest fighters for the preliminaries? I shook my head at Beerus then continued, there's no need for plans considering our strength, don't you think? Then I pointed at Broly with my eyes. Beerus nodded to himself then said, Whatever. I don't care the preliminaries don't matter. Just win the tournament and don't make our universe a laughingstock. I laughed at his words, then said, It would be quite impossible to do that considering our power. Beerus smirked then gave me a thumbs up. Wis took us all to the preliminaries place which was actually in the palace of Zeno in one of his more remote rooms, there was a stage made by the Grand Priest himself. As we arrived, we looked at the fighters from the other universes. There were three humanoid wolf brothers each in a different color and height. The strongest and tallest was the one with blue fur, he wore black pants and a red scarf he had no shirt on. The other two had red and yellow fur and were shorter than the blue furred one. They also wore pants and no shirt. There was only one other fighter on a different platform watching us over with scorn in his eyes. His skin was brown, and he had a big mustache beard combination he wore a latex bodysuit with half being colored black and other red. This was Topo while I didn't remember the wolf trio's name. 
The wolf trio was aggressive, and they told us how they would beat us in the ground such and such. The Grand Priest interrupted them with a cough which made them sweat, then said, As per instructed you can challenge Universe 7, this is a preliminaries round, so it doesn't matter. This was made to show Zeno-sama what he will see at the real tournament in advance. The other gods of destruction and their kais nodded. The wolf trio was practically ready to jump from their stands. Kampa was grumbling under his breath his stand had a few people too. Namely Kaba, Frost and an unknown Namikian. He wanted to challenge Universe 7, but he knew he couldn't defeat them even if he gave his best. He didn't even recognize the tall guy with wild hair. But he gave him the vibes that he was pretty strong. The wolf trio was pretty dumb in his opinion. Out of the stands, Bergamo the blue-furred wolf jumped down and pointed towards Goku while saying, You come over here and fight. Goku smiled and jumped from the stands as well. Bergamo crouched down as he was ready to jump at Goku while Goku took his fighting stance. The Grand Priest smiled towards Zeno, and he started to count down before the full countdown finished, he said. Oh my, I almost forgot about the rules, let me tell them to you now, no flying, no hidden weapons, no healing items, no lethal force as killing your opponent would get you disqualified, there will be some more rules added to the actual tournament, but these are the main ones. Then he finished the countdown and both fighters launched themselves at each other. Bergamo threw a right hook at Goku which he easily dodged then Goku counterattacked with a kick to the face which threw Bergamo to the edge of the stage. Bergamo then used his claws to stop himself from being thrown out and losing the match. He laughed as he started to buff up and threw himself at Goku again now with more vigor and strength than before. He was getting stronger every time Goku hit him. After a few tens of hits he started to match Goku and he was even pushing Goku back. Goku smirked at Bergamo's power then shouted and transformed in his Super Saiyan form. Bergamo was immediately outclassed. Goku started punching him like he was a nothing but an empty sack of flour. Bruises and blood started to splatter out of cracked skin. And it turned his fur coat a dirty red. He started to howl as his muscles started to increase in mass and veins appeared around them and counter-punched Goku in the jaw knocking him a few meters away from him. Goku spit out a bit of blood from his mouth and launched himself right back at Bergamo not letting him rest at all. Fighting with Broly every day for two weeks tempered Goku's fighting style to the point he didn't let his enemy rest at all. Because if Broly got to rest even a bit his power level would adapt to the one he fought. Bergamo having a similar ability to Broly's potential gave Goku a bit of PTSD. Considering how many beatings he took from Broly in two weeks. Vegeta was also the same as him. Bergamo started to cave in as his ability was starting to be unable to bear Goku's power. Goku was already starting to use his Ikari mode in combination with his Super Scion form. Bergamo's muscles were already starting to give out due to the pressure of Goku attacking him and his ability overloading them. But if he gave up using his ability all his power he gathered would dissipate, and he would lose the match getting his universe and himself humiliated, there haven't been even five minutes since the fight began. Zeno's eyes shined as he looked at the fight with wonder and gleefulness in his eyes. It just looked like he found a new toy that he couldn't wait to play with. I observed the fight and nodded to myself. Goku's power level was getting higher and higher after he trained with Broly and Vegeta stimulating their potentials. Even though he wasn't ready for Ultra Instinct yet, if he trained in the time chamber and with the pressure in the tournament of power, he could still reach the state. Bergamo spat out blood as his internals were injured when Goku hit him directly in the chest with a key infused fist. He was ready to pass out, but Goku grabbed him by his tail and threw him out of the ring directly. Topo narrowed his eyes seeing how the other universe lost so easily to Goku. It seemed he took Goku as a worthy enemy already and he didn't even transform into a Super Scion God yet. The Redford Wolf came down from the stands and took his stance sweating knowing his bigger brother was already defeated by our universe. Goku got out of the stage as his fight was over. Vegeta made his way down to the stage and harumphed, making the Redford Wolf humanoid to shudder a bit. Vegeta took his stance and smirked coldly at the poor wolf then appeared directly in front of him kicking him in the chin. The wolf however dodged, 
He was sweating intensely, however, and he had a scared look on his face. The yellow-furred one shouted and said, Basil, don't let him have an easy time, you hear me? Basil shook his head and didn't say anything at all. He knew he was outmatched, but he still tried to do something he didn't want to go down without a fight. His scrawny form buffed up as his muscles inflated, and his power level increased by a large margin. Then as his hind legs enlarged, he threw himself at Vegeta. Vegeta smirked and they headbutt each other. Basil came out as the weaker party, but Vegeta got pushed a bit as well. Vegeta shouted as he transformed directly into his Super Saiyan form, then threw a punch right towards Basil's face. Basil put his arms in a crossed position right at the moment the punch was ready to hit him in the face and blocked. But his arms made a sickening crunch as both of them broke, and he shouted afterward, I surrender! Then he flew away from the stage and landed on the stands. Bergamo patted Basil on the shoulder and sighed. Universe 7 was full of monsters. He looked towards the yellow-furred wolf and said, Lavender, if that other guy is as strong as the others, I'm not sure if you should even go up. Let's not disgrace our universe anymore. Lavender growled, but he didn't know what to say. They came in strong and insulted Universe 7 only to be trashed around like they were grunts. His ears dropped down as he muttered to himself. Then he ignored Bergamo's advice and jumped on the stage. Beerus yawned as the fights were boring for him. His universe had a very high mortal level and his fighters were also of the highest quality with even a god in their midst. Seeing that Zeno and the Grand Priest didn't comment on my appearance in the fighter's position, it seemed both of them agreed to my presence in the Tournament of Power. Lee was meditating on Universe 6 platform, and he didn't greet me since the fights began, he was just staying there behind the fighters. From his aura, I could infer that he didn't want to listen to the fights and fight, but it wasn't the time for him to fight yet. His aura was almost inexistent as I didn't observe him in the start, it seemed he trained into a special concealing technique or trained for a special transformation. Gohan was ready to make his way down to the fight, but Broly put an arm in front of him and said, I would like to fight now. Gohan just nodded. He didn't Broly's power to be shown yet, but he couldn't stop Broly to fight if that's what he wanted to do. Broly jumped down to the stage and smiled towards Lavender. Lavender didn't know what to infer from that smile. But he grinned himself. He thought that Broly was an easy target as he looked a bit innocent with his hair down and his easygoing look about him. Lavender approached Broly at quick speeds then blew a purple cloud out of his mouth. But Broly just used his key to disperse it then grabbed Lavender by the neck then face planted him directly into the stage. The stage cracked as Broly's greenish aura leaked out. Lavender was already out cold. Broly looked at his hands, then at Lavender, and scratched the back of his head. He always similarly fought with Goku and Vegeta, so he didn't know why Lavender was so easily knocked out. He bowed towards Lavender's unconscious body and left the stage. Goku and Vegeta shuddered as they looked at Lavender, seemingly pitying him. Topo grunted, then without any other instruction jumped down to the stage himself. Belmond, the clown god of destruction, wanted to tell him something but refrained to speak after he saw the look in Topo's eyes. Gohan thought it was his time to fight, but I narrowed my eyes at Topo and put an arm in front of Gohan and said, I haven't stretched myself in a while, Gohan. Give me this fight. Gohan scratched the back of his head a tick that he mimicked from his father. Then he said, But Krillin San, you are our strongest fighter. It's not strategically correct for you to fight already. I smirked at Gohan and told him, I know, but it seems this will be our last fight for today. The Grand Priest was observing Zeno-sama, and he saw how he enjoyed the fights and he smiled himself as well. Also, the stage won't take many beatings anymore. It was already on its last legs and the fight between me and Topo would be the proverbial last straw on a camelback. I jumped down from the stands, put both my hands together and said, Amitba fellow fighter, I will be your opponent this round. Topo narrowed his yellow eyes as his beard bellowed while his aura appeared. He couldn't see through my power at all. 
He shouted as he buffed up and entered his full power mode. I smiled, then used my full power technique as my physique buffed up as well. Topo launched himself at me, but I used my peaceful state from my three emotions enhancement to easily dodge all of his attacks. The angel's god of destructions and the grand priest himself gasped as they saw me. Then the grand priest took a better look and said, This is similar to Ultra Instinct but different as well. Topo was getting flustered as I was dodging all his attacks as he powered up even higher, but I always kept my power near his. This was a good fight to see what my three emotions enhancement could do. The peaceful state was pretty strong he couldn't do anything to me at all as I dodged all of his attacks. My mind was clear and in a pure state. I stopped my dodging and caught his fist as a red wrathful aura started to appear around me. Topo started to sweat as his brows got up and his widened. A savage smile appeared on my face as I hit him directly in the face, and he skidded over more than a few meters. He almost couldn't catch himself before he was thrown out of the stage. Some trenches were made in the stage as he anchored himself with his feet and arms, stopping himself from being thrown out. Zeno started to laugh happily, then said, My friend is so great! And he clapped afterward and continued saying how this was so exciting and cool. My mind was clouded in the wrathful state and I just threw myself at Topo without any regards of my safety. Topo seeing my state of mind started to fight more safely and smartly. But no plans in the world could triumph over pure power. Every time he tried to dodge my punch found him immediately and threw him off balance. My power was also draining faster in this mode but I couldn't stop myself easily after entering the wrathful state willingly. I shouted as my power level increased. Even more, the red aura around me intensified as Topo took hit after hit. His chest was starting to cave in as his bones were making crunches. His arms were failing him as he shouted to himself. He was ready to go in his destroyer mode. Suddenly, my eyes cleared as my power level returned to normal and my red aura dispersed. A combined aura of peacefulness and wrath started to appear around me for a few milliseconds before the transformation reverted. My full power technique turned itself off and I gasped. My power level, however, turned immediately back to normal. Topo tried to take advantage of this to turn the fight in his favor, but I stopped him and said, Amitba, I injured you a bit too much during my other state, and I'm extremely sorry for that. Let me heal you and take this fight as a draw, what do you think? Fighting Topo right now would give me no more benefits. I only toyed with him in my peaceful mode, and if I didn't stop myself at the final moment I might have killed him. Even though he would have gone in his destroyer mode my punch would have gone directly through his chest and end him. I might have even been disqualified from the tournament of power. Topo huffed, but suddenly he vomited a mouthful of blood and collapsed to his knees. I used my healing technique to heal all of his injuries and then left the stage. I felt bad for beating him so hard, of course, he would become stronger after this beating so I guess we were even. With the insights from this fight, I could learn to control my wrathful state better and approach the combination of states easier. Zeno nodded at the Grand Priest, then the Grand Priest said in a loud voice which everyone could hear. Zeno Sama said that he enjoyed these preliminaries fight very much and he is looking forward to the real tournament, you can all disperse and go back to finish the creation of your teams or train. There's only one week left till the tournament begins. Remember that? Everyone teleported out of the palace in different types of colored auras. Was took us back to Earth as well. Paragus was waiting at Capsule Corporation while talking to Nappa and sipping some tea from time to time. When he saw us come back, he left his tea on the table and approached Broly while asking us, Did the boy do well? We all nodded, and he smiled at Broly then patted him on the shoulders. Even though his father treated him suboptimally on Vampa, Broly still loved Paragus quite a lot, and he thoroughly enjoyed the change of heart his father had. Frisia Cooler and Cold came forward and bowed towards me. Ryu and Marin were just behind them with Lazuli and Jaika. I smiled towards all of them, I gave some more pointers to the cold trio, then left with my family. Lazuli dragged me by the hand and said, 
We haven't visited my brother at all during all these years. I think it's time to give him a visit. I talk with him from time to time, and he is doing good for himself. He even has 16th help at his job. I smiled and nodded at Lazuli. I could go with them to visit Lapis. The children could see their other uncle as well. Afterward, I could go back to training. We flew directly to the island where Lapis worked and we met there. On Earth, everyone was on the lookout as I called them over. Broly was sitting down and waiting while Vegeta and Goku were just waiting. The cold family trio was meditating while Bu was eating. Gohan was talking with Piccolo while I just teleported over after some time with my family and Lapis. Lapis was doing well for his own he married and had two children. Android 16 helped him from time to time with his park ranger job as he liked to interact and protect nature. I coughed and everyone's attention was on me. We will have to do some special training before the Tournament of Power will start. The limit to the chamber has been increased by quite a lot with Den's help. Den waved his hand at all of us from behind me. Popo was just smiling like always. I continued. We will enter all at once. And we will intensely train for four years. Broly scratched his head. Not knowing of the chamber's properties. But he decided to not comment at all. I nodded towards all of them and invited all of them in. Immediately they powered to their best form, Goku and Vegeta transformed into Super Saiyan Blue while Gohan directly transformed into one as well. Broly shouted as he transformed into his legendary Super Saiyan form. His eyes started to whiten as his irises disappeared. He was ready to go berserk, but I infused some sacred key inside of him to make him calm down. With my help Broly will master his Akari Mode Super Scion combination that resulted in his legendary transformation easily enough. While I kept Broly in check, the others trained with each other. The Cold Family Trio was training with Bu and Bu was already starting to overpower them only a few minutes in the chamber. It took them their new transformations to keep Bu in check. Piccolo was a little bit weaker than Gohan, but his power was starting to catch up. After the first year of training, Broly could control himself enough. With the insights I gained from Broly's wrathful state, I could now try to control my wrath mode easier while my power in it also got a sizable boost. Two more years went by and all the humanoids had beards on them by now, but we just ignored everything and continued training. I could fully control my wrathful state and my peaceful state by now, a little more and they would both be perfect with the certain conditions I could also combine them. Goku and Vegeta perfected their Super Saiyan Blue transformations and Gohan was just behind them. Only a little more and he would catch up to them and maybe even go beyond them. Their power levels started to hit a wall and they couldn't increase anymore, so they decided to train their techniques. The same could be said for Broly, as Broly was a mutant and his legendary Super Saiyan form was already equivalent to Super Saiyan Blue, his other forms were kind of lackluster, he could achieve Super Saiyan 2 and 3, but why would he need to when their multiplier was smaller? I tried to make him combine his Ikari mode and his Super Saiyan 2 to create something like Legendary Super Saiyan 2, but he just couldn't do it. His Super Saiyan 2 form would immediately revert when he tried to do it, it only worked with his normal Super Saiyan. Goku could combine the Ikari mode with his other Super Saiyan forms, but of course, the boost Broly got from it was way higher than Goku's in his first Super Saiyan form couldn't even compare. After the last year was over we all got out of the chamber and four days were gone by in the real world. We still had three days left before the Tournament of Power started officially. Everyone was gone to their own houses after they cleaned themselves and shaved their beards. All of our techniques were honed and our power reached the peak. We were all ready for the Tournament of Power. Wiss was observing everyone as we gathered at Capsule Corporation. The three days of rest helped us to calm our raging key and our bodies after four whole years of intense training with few rests between. Beerus nodded his head as he looked at us. Especially when he saw me he narrowed his eyes as he couldn't see through me anymore at all. Even though I failed to fully control the combined mode I could still invoke its powers in short bursts. Goku and Vegeta already mastered their Super Saiyan Blue transformations fully and their techniques also improved quite a lot after four years of training and sparring. Goku was already on his way to gain Ultra Instinct, 
the Tournament of Power would be that catalyst that would help him gain the form. In the void in a nearby empty zone of Zeno's palace, the Grand Priest just finished creating the fighting stage for the universes. It was completely circular with a giant pillar in the middle, it was colored in ashen brown and gray. Zeno was looking at the stage and clapping his heads while smiling. The Grand Priest nodded his head and smiled at Zeno while saying, Zeno-sama, should we invite the universes? There's only one day left. Maybe let's invite the gods of destruction to test the sturdiness of the stage. Zeno's little eyes started to shine then he said, Yes, yes, invite the gods of destruction and make them fight. The Grand Priest coughed. Then he telepathically informed every angel to take their god of destruction to the coordinates he gave them. All the angels complied and after a few minutes, all the universes came. Universe 2 God of Destruction was a woman who looked like Cleopatra and her name was Helles. The angel looked the same as was only with long flowing hair that reached his back. Beerus and Wis came afterward. Then the God of Universe 3 which was a green mecha looking guy. His angel had a big nose and slicked back hair. Afterward, it was Universe 9 the dwarf-like green-skinned god of destruction with a red beard and bald head made himself known by coughing. His angel was behind him, he sported short hair. Afterward, every other universe came. Lastly, Universe 11 made their way over. The Grand Priest opened his mouth. I invited all of you here to test the durability of the stage. We wouldn't want our participants to destroy the stage wholly and making them unable to fight anymore, right? The gods of destruction nodded their heads almost all at the same time then made their way to the stage. It was a god of destruction battle royale. Beerus, of course, made himself known as the top god of destruction by being able to beat his brother and universe's nine gods of destruction by himself. Afterward, some of the other gods of destruction wanted to team up on Beerus, but when Beerus got serious the stage which was already starting to break down was starting to fall in the void at high speeds. The Grand Priest immediately intoned. Stop this is enough. I will have to reinforce the stage even more, of course it's impossible to make it indestructible with my powers only. But it should be enough to not get destroyed as fast as it was now even if some participants have powers comparable to gods of destruction. He eyed universe 7 and universe 11 when he said that. The gods of destruction and their angels left afterward, while the grand priest quickly fixed and reinforced the stage. Afterward, when everything was done and fixed it was time for everyone to get to the stage and fight. We are all at Capsule Corporation. Supreme Kai and Elder Kai were with us as well as they said they wanted to watch the fight as well even though their presence wasn't needed. The other Z fighters wanted to join as well to observe. Wis didn't see anything wrong with it so he let them come with us. We all clasped the hands of each other as Wis struck the ground with his staff and we teleported directly to the stage. We were there, met with all of the other fighters. Wis Beerus and the Kais made their way to the observer stands as the Grand Priest started talking. There are some additional rules to the others, we added a time limit of 48 minutes in mortal time. Flying is allowed now for people who can fly naturally, the other rules stand as before. I observed the other fighters and shook my head. The only one who would give us problems now would be Jiren. I looked towards Universe 6 and Kale Kaba and Cauliflo were arguing about something. Even if the two fused Broly would mop the floor with Kefla. His power wasn't anything like before, and he now could control himself as well. After four years of training only I could defeat him now, and it would be quite a hard fight of course if I used the combined mode he would go down easily, he was the strongest mortal but he didn't reach Ultra Instinct's level. Jiren opened his eyes and took a look at me then nodded to himself. It seemed he could feel my power even when I was hiding it. Jiren was quite the peculiar guy. As I observed everyone, I ignored the others, the only would be problems would be the combination of Kale and Cauliflower and Universe 11, mostly Jiren, the others while strong and having abilities that were somewhat advantageous to their current environment would still be unable to throw us out of the stage. I made sure so by strengthening everybody to the maximum before the tournament. Kale, Cauliflower and Kaba approached Goku, Vegeta and Broly, Cauliflower said with a haughty tone. I heard you old dudes are the strongest science around. 
don't blink during the fights, or I might throw you all off the stage. Kale didn't say anything, but she looked at Broly with a strange look in her eyes. It seemed like something was attracting her to him. Broly had the same look in his eyes, but Caulifla dragged Kale back after she saw she didn't move after her speech was done. Vegeta snorted at her words while Goku laughed. Gohan scratched his head and wondered what was that all about. The cold trio ignored everyone else and only interacted with each other. While Bu shouted and Piccolo waited the beginning of the tournament with eyes closed. I looked towards the Grand Priest as he smiled towards all of us and moved near Zeno while saying, Zeno-sama will count down when he reaches to zero the fight will start. Zeno started counting down in his childlike voice. 10, 9, 3, 2, 1, 0. All of the fighter teams took the distance between each other and eyed their enemies warily. Jiren was meditating on the stage, not moving from where he was before. A pigman from Universe 10 tried to attack Jiren, but a green hand stopped him. It was Zamasu. He was clad in the same Kai clothes he had before. But something was different about him. He also didn't have the Potera earrings anymore. Zamasu shook his head. Then he cleaned his hand using a handkerchief and muttered under his breath. I had to touch this dirty mortal to... I narrowed my eyes as I couldn't see Zamasu from the beginning. I thought they came with the same team as the one they had in the anime, but it seems I was wrong. It also seemed Zamasu was hiding his power level, as not a bit of aura was escaping from him. I thought only the Scions from Universe 6 and Universe 11 would be a problem to us, but it seems I was wrong. Other teams started to battle each other, but they were also eyeing our team from the side trying to see if we would make any moves. They knew of our strength, and they were wary of us. The same could be said about Universe 11. They eyed both us and waited for us to clash against each other. They would be very glad if we exhausted each other or even eliminated each other from the tournament so they would have a chance of winning. Officially the Tournament of Power started. I narrowed my eyes as I started walking towards Jiren. Goku was defending against some strange alien that decided to attack him then he easily pushed the alien off him when he saw that I was walking towards Jiren. Krillin, why don't you let me take him on? I shook my head then said, While you have to break through your limits, you think I don't? Goku scratched the back of his head afterward. He tried to find another target to fight against. Vegeta scoffed as the trio of Scions started to approach him and Broly. The cold trio was raising through the other fighters like a hot knife through butter. There were elimination sounds every second. It seemed 48 minutes weren't needed. Of course, the other participants wanted to play safe, but we didn't let them. Gohan Piccolo and Bu also took care of the others easily. By the time 10 minutes were passed, only Universe 11, 6, and 10 were still standing on the stage. All of the other universe's participants had gloomy expressions as they stood in their universe stands. The gods of destruction were also sad, while the angels were stoic. We reached the finals of the Tournament of Power. I was staring down Jiren for ten minutes and he did the same. We were fighting using our mental power, as when someone tried to attack me, he got slapped out of the stage by a mental wave. The same happened with Jiren too. Lee was watching everything happening as his blindfold was off. It was time for him to get serious as well. He had to protect his universe. He was waiting for me to fight with Jiren then swoop in and end me knowing that I was the biggest threat in my team. It was time for the Tournament of Power to reach its climax. Lee was observing us ready to gank any of the other whenever an opportunity would present itself. It was time to get serious as I launched myself directly at Jiren with a key enhanced fist. Jiren didn't hold back at all, and we hit each other in the chest directly at the same time. Golden and Red Key came respectively out of our backs and we staggered back. Jiren smirked as he finally found someone strong enough to fight him. But his smirk immediately disappeared from his face, and a serious expression overtook it. Back with the others, Goku was fighting Kaba while Vegeta was fighting Kalifla. Kale and Broly were also trading blows at a slower pace. Piccolo Gohan Bu and the Cold Trio were fighting off Universe 10 and 11 remaining fighters. 
Zamasu was hiding around the other fighters ready to give a counterattack while the fighters from Universe 6 were ready to take advantage of the others fighting. Hit had his eyes narrowed as he observed the fight between Goku and Kaba. He knew Goku's strength was way above his, but he didn't know why he was still fighting him. Goku and Kaba were trading punches both in their Super Saiyan form. Kaba suddenly smiled as he shouted, and electric arcs started to envelop him. He was pushing Goku back afterward with his power. Goku laughed as similar electric arcs enveloped him as well and Kaba's advantage was gone. Then he said, You are talented Kaba. Good job on learning Super Saiyan 2 already. Then his laughter stopped and he continued, Unfortunately, I still have to throw you out. He started to charge Ki in his fist and punched Kaba directly in the chest, throwing him out of the stage. He appeared on Universe's six benches. Kampa grumbled. Then he became sad at the realization he might be erased. The other Universes who lost weren't erased yet. So he didn't know what would truly happen, but the words that came out of the Grand Priest's mouth next sealed the deal. Aha! I forgot to say something. The erasure of the universes will happen after the winning universe is coronated. Forgive me for not informing you earlier. The hope of all the universes who lost was crushed directly into dust the moment those words came out of the Grand Priest's mouth. The remainders of Universe 11 team were getting eliminated leaving only Topo and Jiren behind. Topo suddenly powered up and appeared behind Piccolo tackling him down with his huge frame then throwing him out of the stage. It seemed Topo's power increased as well after he fought me, and he still wasn't using his destroyer mode yet. Jiren and I traded blows as we put each other off balance with our punches and kicks. Lee suddenly appeared behind me shooting a key blast in my face which made a mark appear over my head. Then he threw himself at me and kicked me in the stomach throwing me a few meters away. Then he did a roundhouse kick that made Jiren fly away almost reaching the edge of the stage. He dashed towards one of his teammates afterward two shiny white shields appearing over him and his teammates. I grabbed the stage and embedded my feet in it making myself stop skidding on it. Jiren grabbed the edge of the stage and launched himself back on it, then I'd Lee. Lee just smiled at both of us. I guess it was time to get rid of Universe 6 then. Jiren and I both nodded at each other. We needed no interventions in our fight. Zamasu appeared behind King Cold and smiled coldly at him, then used a key blade to hack away at him. Cold dodged but Zamasu grabbed him by the tail and threw him off the stage using his divine key to power himself. A purple aura started to appear around Zamasu as destroyer energy stored in himself started to surface. Vegeta scoffed at Caulifla's attacks. Even though she was talented she was an amateur fighter. Vegeta directly kicked her in the stomach, making her throw spit out of her mouth. But she got up from the stage afterward and threw herself at Vegeta again while saying, that's all you got, old man? Vegeta narrowed his eyes at her toughness, then transformed directly into Super Saiyan 3. Cauliflo widened her eyes at Vegeta's sudden transformation. Then her eyes started to shine while she said, This is the fabled Super Saiyan 3? So cool. Vegeta's eyes softened at her words. After all, she was a fellow Scion. His race was almost extinct so he had a soft spot for fellow pure science. He coughed a bit and continued fighting with her, of course. She was getting pummeled left and right like she was a sandbag but her power level started to adjust to Vegeta's during the beating. She shouted as electric arcs started to surround her being as she reached Super Saiyan 2. When Kale saw how hard her sis was being beaten she shouted to herself as her power level increased by a goddamn freaking lot. Her muscles started to bulge and the white of her eyes was showing indicating she was losing control. Broly eyes widened as her transformation resembled his. He transformed as well, but he could control himself. He grabbed her in a full Nelson lock, making her unable to help Caulifla. She was starting to overpower Broly, but Broly grunted and his Akari mode activated in tandem with his Super Scion form, making her unable to budge at all. Caulifla seeing her sister plight ran off from Vegeta and tried to kick Broly in the face but Broly didn't even flinch from her flimsy kick. Vegeta appeared behind her and said, 
Nothing personal, we are fellow scions, so I will be more gentle. Vegeta punched her directly in the stomach with a fully key enhanced fist. Key started to appear on her back as she was thrown out the stage blood and spittle coming out of her mouth. Where was the I will be more gentle there, Vegeta? Broly grunted and knocked out Kale then threw her out of the stage as well. Even though he was interested in her, he knew that the fate of his universe was at stake. Zamasu was keeping the cold trio off by himself, while Bu and Gohan were fighting Topo off. Jiren was finishing the other weaker participants from Universe 6, while I was handling Hit. But Jiren suddenly appeared behind me and hit me directly into Lee's direction, saying, I still need to win this tournament, and your team has too many members remaining. Lee was ready to roundhouse kick me out of stage, but suddenly something inside my mind clicked insert ultimate battle by Akira Ushida here. I suddenly disappeared from Lee's sight and appeared behind him. Flustered, he directly transformed into his Bodhisattva mode as his skin turned gold and his eyes started glowing. However, three hits that appeared out of nowhere hit him in the chest, head, and stomach at the same time. He coughed blood and his transformation left him, then his eyes widened. You! You attained it? No, this is different. It's not enlightened Buddha instinct. Jiren narrowed his eyes and sped forward to me. His red, fiery aura encasing him as he powered up. Hit was taking advantage of this and skipped time to try and directly punch me with his assassination technique in a vital spot. But I dodged everything flawlessly, like I knew what everyone was going to do before they even knew. I smirked, but the state I was in suddenly reverted as I dodged everything. I shouted as I used my supreme bodhisattva mode instead and started fighting all three of them at the same time. Zamasu was having a hard time to fend off all of the others at the same time, but he suddenly smirked as he started shouting himself. His purple aura encased him fully as he started to buff up and his eyes turned to full purple. He started using his destruction energy blatantly as he easily threw off cooler and cold out of the stage. Frisia transformed directly into his golden form then started laughing. Ho ho ho! With Krillin-sama help I already achieved something else besides this. His shout never stopped as his power level climbed higher and higher his skin turning from gold to platinum. His deep purple gems turned blue instead, but he grimaced inside. Even though he achieved this form it was very draining on him. Gohan and Bu were now fighting Topo who directly transformed in his destroyer form. Gohan dodged everything he could as his Super Scion Blue transformation was in full effect while Bu wasn't fat anymore. He had a sportily built body and his face was serious. Frisia knew that he couldn't fight a protracted battle, and he threw himself at Zamasu with all he had while Zamasu shouted. How could a mortal like you achieve such power, you? You said you are that Buddha's disciple. But before he could continue his questioning, Frisia appeared directly in front of him and blasted him point-blank with his palm. A blue-white combination of a blast threw Zamasu in the air, but he didn't fly off the stage. He grabbed the stage and threw himself right back at Frisia. Frisia didn't have much gas in the tank left, he couldn't master this transformation, as he just unlocked it in the last few months of training in the chamber. He put everything he had in a punch as his transformation left him, he directly got back to his final normal form and threw himself at Zamasu. He hit him directly in the stomach, but Zamasu grabbed his arm, taking him off the stage with him. End of song they both appeared in their respective booths. Beerus patted Frisia and the other cold family members on the back and said, You did well. It's everything left on these other guys. Goku, Vegeta, and Broly joined me, fighting back against the last three fighters left. Goku took over hit while Vegeta and Broly ganked Lee. I started to fight Jiren seriously as I directly used my wrath state to start pummeling him, but he clenched his muscles as his shirt exploded and his power level increased, starting to rival mine in the wrath state. We punched each other in the face then in the stomach as shockwaves started to appear around us, pushing the others back from our fight. 
Topo was laughing maniacally as he threw a giant destruction ball at Bu. Bu tried to deflect it, but it started to engulf him. He started to disperse in different pieces of pink gum to dodge the attack, which destroyed a bit of the stage. Bu appeared behind Topo as all the pieces of gum started to restrain his extremely muscled form. Bu then told Gohan. Bu holds big guy and Gohan pushes us both out. Gohan nodded his head and formed a Kamehameha in his hands which he threw at the both of them pushing them out of the stage. Even though Topo struggled and almost escaped from Bu's bindings in the end, it was too late to dodge the Kamehameha. It pushed him off with Bu in tow trenches left down below on the stage as he tried to deflect it upwards. Goku used his Kaioken directly to times 20 to end the fight with Hit, but Hit continued to adapt to his power, punching him in his vital points over and over. Suddenly Goku's transformation reverted as a strange aura started to encase him. His eyes turned silver, and his hair started to stand up. The angels and gods of destruction started to gasp as they all said in unison, A mortal is achieving. Ultra instinct. Goku appeared behind Hit as three invisible punches headed directly for Hit. They weren't invisible per se but extremely fast. They had achieved such a speed they couldn't be seen with the naked eye anymore. Hit took all the punches directly. His balance fell and Goku attacked him again, starting to push him towards the direction of the edge of the stage. Lee was fighting both Broly and Vegeta off, but he was at a disadvantage while he simultaneously was starting to chant something. Buddha says that severing the seven emotions and six desires makes you achieve enlightenment, so I shall do it. His chants became unhearable afterward as all emotions were wiped away from his face. Insert Ultra Instinct theme official version Lee immediately started dodging every attack from both Scions easily. Then his key encased punch directly threw off Vegeta from the stage. Vegeta coughed blood while he skidded on the stage. Then he flew directly in the void. Broly growled as his power level started to adapt towards Lee's. But Lee was even faster. He grabbed Broly by the neck and hit him ten times over all of his body simultaneously in his acupoints. Broly's transformation reverted and Lee started to pant. Enlightened Buddha Instinct put a high burden on the user's body just like Ultra Instinct. Without anything else happening Broly was thrown off the stage as well. Hit was overwhelmed by Goku's new power, and he couldn't keep up at all. After being battered continuously, he was thrown off the stage himself. Lee appeared in front of Goku thinking that he was off guard since he took care of Hit. But both of their punches met in midair. The shockwaves rivaled the ones from Mai and Jiren's fight. I couldn't look over at their fight because all my attention was on Jiren. Goku and Lee clashed against each other as Zeno clapped his hands and said, So exciting! My friends are fighting? So exciting! Goku punched Lee in the face while Lee punched Goku in the stomach. Both of them grabbed the hurting parts and then resumed the fight. Goku's power suddenly started to take a dip as he reverted from his Ultra Instinct Omen. Lee tried to attack him while he was weak, but he coughed a bit of blood and his power started to take a dip as well, but not as huge as Goku's. Goku started to dodge Lee's punches at a slow pace, but he was nicked from time to time, and he was almost thrown from the stage. Goku smirked as whenever he was thrown down on the stage, he planted little bombs on the stage with his key, and Lee already treaded on one. The explosion engulfed Lee as Goku charged a Kamehameha that hit Lee full on. But Lee threw a stick with a yellow end from God knows where, and he dashed towards it through the Kamehameha and roundhouse kicked Goku. Goku was on the edge of the stage, one of his hands dangling off at the limit of his powers. His brows furrowed as Lee slowly started to approach the end of the stage. His face was emotionless as he wanted to stamp on Goku's hand and throw him off the stage directly. Goku immediately smirked when Lee's feet hit Goku's hand. An explosion occurred that destroyed the remaining stage Lee was on and both of them got eliminated. Gohan and I were the only ones left on the stage along with Jiren. As I clashed with Jiren, 
Gohan was resting and watching from the sidelines. I started using my peaceful state from time to time as my body's healing factor started to slow due to its overuse. I couldn't let him hit me as much as anymore, or it would be dangerous. I changed from my peaceful state to my wrathful one every time an opening came and hit him in the ribs, chest, and head. However, Jiren was extremely sturdy, as when I hit him he traded with me and hit me back. All his openings were traps. I coughed some blood, and he did as well, but we continued fighting. The changing from a wrathful state to a peaceful state gave me more control over the forms, and I suddenly started to combine them directly in the middle of the fight. Jiren's punch was ready to touch my jaw, but I suddenly caught it with my hand. I succeeded. The combination of switching between states and the intense fighting made me able to succeed in combining the two states consciously. Or how is it better called plot armor? Jiren shouted as he liberated his hand with a burst of red fiery key. He threw another punch at me, but I dodged it easily, then hit him three times in the chest in the same spot. His heart almost stopped there for a minute as he pumped key in his chest to restore it, but it was already too late. Gohan approached him from behind and threw a fully powered punch onto the back of his head, making him dizzy. I charged a key blast in my hands and pushed it directly into him throwing him off balance combined with his dizziness he was directly thrown off the stage. Universe 7 cheered, while all the other universes were gloomy and sad. The Grand Priest coughed a bit, then Zeno's hands started to glow. Every other universe besides Universe 7 were erased. Beerus looked till the last moment at his brother. Even though they didn't like each other that much, they were still brothers. Goku had a serious look on his face as Kaba hit and the others disappeared. Jiren had an enlightened look on his face in his last seconds, as if he grasped something about him before that he couldn't understand. Lee was of course emotionless as all of his emotions and desires were severed. He failed his objective. The Grand Priest turned to me and Gohan and said in a loud voice so that everyone else who remained heard him. Universe 7 is the winner of the Tournament of Power, and now for their reward. Out of nowhere, seven gigantic balls appeared below the stage as the Grand Priest started to speak in the language of the gods. Vegeta muttered under his breath again, something about speaking the language of the gods. The giant gold dragon appeared as the Grand Priest turned his eyes to me and said, Tell me your wish, Krillin. He had a smile on his face as he said that. I coughed a bit and said, I wish for all the destroyed universes and their inhabitants to be restored back to normal. The Grand Priest's smile never left his face as he told the wish to the dragon, whose eyes started to shine then left directly, not saying anything else. All the mortals and gods of destruction from the other universes came back into being as they looked at each other with bewilderment on their faces. They didn't know what to say, one moment they became nothingness and the next they are back. The Grand Priest informed all of them of my wish, and they looked at me with gratefulness in their gazes. Was chuckled while Beerus kept his head high. He was proud of having such a great universe. Afterward, Zeno-sama started to speak. I truly enjoyed this tournament. All of you can leave now. Then he left into a multicolored beam of light with his guards leaving the Grand Priest behind. He smiled then left as well. Everyone made it back to their own universe safely where they were asked about the tournament from the ones in the known. The Z fighters and the Kais were still talking about the fights and how they liked everything about them and how cool me and Goku were during the tournament. I smiled towards all of them as we arrived back to Earth. From now on I could relax fully, I would just train from time to time to master the combined state. From now on I could enjoy life with my family and friends without any other beings who would want to destroy the universe appear randomly. I thought that my life was going to be peaceful after so many fights and tons of training I did to continue keeping the universe peaceful, but after a few months of resting things went up in flames again. Vegeta and Goku were now fighting on Namek against a goat-like humanoid. His fur was blue, and he smiled creepily at both of them. 
Vegeta scoffed at him, then directly transformed into his Super Saiyan form and attacked him. The goat-like fellow was immediately overwhelmed by Vegeta's quick attacks, but the goat man's smile never left his face as he grabbed Vegeta's fist and started to drain him of his power. Vegeta's transformation left him and the goat man started to power up higher and higher. Goku immediately appeared above the goat man Kamehameha in charging in his hands ready to shoot it at him but the goat man opened his mouth wide and ate the Kamehameha. Goku's eyes widened at the results. Then he transformed into his Super Saiyan Blue form. But the more the Goat Man fought, the stronger he became. The Goat Man chuckled and said in a sinister tone of voice, It's been a while since I Moro have had such delectable treats throw themselves at me with such ease. Come more and more. Before Goku and Vegeta made their way to Namek Moro already drained some of the Namekians off their energy, of course, if he was at his weakest Goku and Vegeta might have been able to defeat him there and then, but unfortunately he got his hands on some energy. Goku and Vegeta couldn't beat Moro directly so they had to leave the planet, they got back to Earth with Goku's instant transmission. There they met with an official from the Galactic Patrol. The official gave them the information about Moro and his powers. Moro the Planet Eater was an old villain that was captured a long time ago by the Galactic Patrol. He escaped during a moment of negligence and now was on his way to gain his power from before. He was using magic to absorb others' ki so Goku and Vegeta weren't sure at all how to defeat such an opponent. This was new for the both of them. They immediately decided to confront me with the problem. I was on a long holiday with my family when Goku suddenly appeared near me. After he informed me about the things that happened, I sighed then followed him to Moro's location. Moro still wasn't that particularly strong. After the Tournament of Power I could use the fusion of the Wrathful State and Peaceful State for shorter durations on command so it wasn't going to be anything hard for me to defeat Moro. I also dabbled in magic so I was sure I could disable his ability of absorbing Ki. We appeared on a different planet that Moro was draining of his Ki as I suddenly threw myself at him. I used magic to insulate myself of other foreign keys and also infused my key with the same property to make sure he wouldn't be able to steal any of my key. The fight wasn't anything hard, the goat man was old, and his body was frail. After a few rounds of him being unable to absorb my key and with the help of Goku, the planet inhabitants were evacuated so he couldn't drain anyone else of their key. With no other batteries to charge him, Moro fell flat on his back coughing and gasping for air. I started to chant my Buddhist Sanskrit as golden words started to appear and engulf Moro directly. His soul was taken out of his body directly as his body turned into ash, and all the energy he took was returned to the planets and people he took it from. His soul was shouting out curses, but the words applied themselves to his skin and took away his ability to talk. Finally, my hand seals finished and he was taken to the cycle of reincarnation to become a better person in his next life. I sighed and left the planet, helping Goku to take all of the evacuated people back to their planet. I made sure that no one else that was linked to him escaped from the galactic prison to avoid any future troubles. Goku found an interesting guy in the galactic patrol who resembled an angel and asked him to train him in fully mastering Ultra Instinct. Vegeta started to take a different path in training, visiting planets like a nomad trying to learn from the universe. Broly visited Universe 6 from time to time due to reasons only known to himself. Other universes also started to unravel as stronger people made their way out of them. Goku Vegeta and the others had to take on other challenges which they didn't need my help with. With my help, both of my wives and children wouldn't die of old age and we could always be forever with each other. It's been a few hundred years already and things changed drastically in the universe. I was hailed as a hero and god on all of the planets while the Z fighters and my students were hailed as heroes of the universe. The evil parts of the universe were destroyed every day by the combination of the galactic patrol and the descendants of the Z fighters. I let Ryu and Marin in the world while I lived a peaceful life in the Buddha kingdom with my wives. Everything was going alright for me, I at first thought that my life as Krillin would be a hard and unforgiving one, 
but with my efforts and the special effects of the Dragon Balls, I reached the peak of the multiverse. Of course, I wasn't sure if I could defeat the Grand Priest at all, but why would I? The Grand Priest's job was to protect Zeno, and I had no problems with Zeno. Everything was going well, and nothing was out of order. Goku appeared in the middle of the Buddha Kingdom, as he transported himself to his family kids grandkids and all included coming in. They were followed in by Ryu and Marin, each with their kids. We were reminiscing under a Bodhi tree and for old time's sake, we decided to spar. I powered up fully as my combined state came into being while Goku's eyes turned a full silvery along with his hair which also arced up. We smiled towards each other and started the fight. We clashed at extremely high speeds. None of the spectators could see us at all punch for punch kick for kick shockwaves made their way around the Buddha Kingdom. I kicked Goku in the stomach while he punched me in the face and we both skidded on the hard ground of the kingdom. We started laughing as we increased the intensity of the fight. After a few weeks of fighting we finally stopped then collapsed on the ground. After we rested enough, we both hugged each other and continued reminiscing while asking each other about what we have been doing. Goku told me on how he trained with an angel from a different universe who decided to join the Galactic Patrol and how he saved the multiverse and other universes different times. He also sometimes wanted to call me to help, but he also wanted to challenge himself thus after his internal conflict was over he decided to do things by himself. As we chatted in the time realm, the Supreme Kai of Time was gasping as crystals of time were destroyed in her giant cabinet. She widened her eyes as she looked at the crystals. The demon realm was also revolting in the underworld due to some reasons unknown to her. She called over her Time Patrol members and put them to work, but they couldn't help with everything. So the next best thing she did was call me Goku and the others over, we accepted and took upon the job easily quelling the Demon's Realm Rebellion. As for the Time Crystals, this took us more time. It was the emergence of two strong demons from the Demon Realm that messed up the timeline. Tawa and Mira, they wanted to take energy from the timelines for a reason they didn't want to disclose. With the help of the Supreme Kai of Time, we, however, were fast enough to defeat them then put an end to their plan. With my help and the dojos that I planted all over the universe, our mortal level increased every day thus making my work easier and easier when crises appeared, it came up to a point that I wasn't needed anymore. I decided it was time to retire and I left my inheritance in the mortal world. Whoever was able to comprehend it would be summoned to the Buddha kingdom where I would impart to him my techniques so he could become the next Buddha. Since the start of everything that happened up till now, it's been hundreds of thousands of years already. I was meditating inside the temple as everything started to shake the world and universes at large start to rip into nothingness. Then one giant white hand approached me and grabbed me. All the universes were destroyed. The face of God which I never forget appeared as I was in his palm. He looked at me with an impish smile then said, You did a good job. Very entertaining work you did there. I didn't create that universe for nothing. I shook my head and looked at him, then said, You created that universe for me? God continued, Of course, why do you think everything went along so well for you? I just wanted to see how you will end up as your karma was so average. I wanted to see what the true you would do. I nodded my head afterward. God was omnipotent and omniscient. Didn't that mean I played in the palm of his hands from the very start? Since he could see the past and the future, it didn't matter what I did now, did it? God shook his head at my thoughts, then continued. I can see the future and the past, but that doesn't mean you can't change your future. There are countless alternate timelines out there, you know? Even though I know everything there is to know, and I can do everything that I want, this power gets boring from time to time, so I restrict it. It was pretty enjoyable to see you struggle and become a type of god yourself. God seemed to have fun at my own expense, but what was I to do? God controlled everything and everyone. He could create universes only in one thought and destroy them the same. God nodded at me, then continued. You did well, very well, you gathered quite a bunch of good karma. I can give you some options now. I looked at God and didn't stop him from talking. I can now send you to heaven if you want to. 
You can meet all your loved ones from the past life there. What do you think? I widened my eyes as memories started to come flooding back from the past and my childhood. I was besides a bed crying my eyes out as my grandmother stood there and said to me in a weak voice, It's okay, Sonny. Cough, cough, this is an old disease of mine that resurfaced, don't blame yourself for it. It's been a few tens of years when I miraculously got through it instead of dying. It seems now my time has come. My grandfather was on her side as he was crying silently as well. My aunt and my father were crying their eyes out as well. My grandfather was massaging her arms in the hope that it would make her feel better. She suddenly said, Massage my other arm. Then she started to spew gibberish as her last breath left her. Her eyes widened, and her face started to turn pale at fast speeds. I kept crying continuously as the memory faded, going through the deaths of all my close relatives. I sucked in a mouthful of cold air and then nodded at God. I missed my parents and grandparents, especially my grandma. She was like a second mother to me as my mother abandoned me at a young age. Instead, Grandma took care of everything as a mother would. God nodded at me, then I was directly teleported to heaven. My appearance of Krillin disappeared as I turned back to how I looked before. I was met with my parents and grandparents as we hugged each other. Tears were falling out of our eyes as we were finally reunited. Okay, I'm sure everyone here won't like the ending of this fanfiction as it was kinda anticlimactic, but... I'm kind of running out of ideas here, I wasn't sure how to end it. Thus it might end up a bit cliched for you. I'm sorry if your expectations weren't met with this chapter, and I will try to improve more in the future. Tomorrow I will start writing the first chapter of my original novel. Hopefully, you will support me through it just like you did with this one. I already know what to write, and I will take opinions and advice on how to advance the novel after the first chapter is posted. Check out the author, Kaioken Guy, to support and check more of his work. Thank you for following the story this far. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.